Ali, Brian Coster here, round three of the 2022 Flat Track Canada season. We make our return to Flamborough, Brian, after a few years' absence. How awesome is this track here today? It's a spectacular. It's a scorcher today. We're talking around 90 Fahrenheit. We're in the low 30s Celsius, so super hot, but a great breeze here, Todd, which is really helping out. Fans are starting to funnel in here, and boy, do we ever have an exciting afternoon of qualifying and practice. Fans are in for a treat, so uh, glad you're joining us here. Todd Valley and Brian Cost are going to bring the call to you. And uh, Todd, a whole host of fast up and comers as well as established pros. We got some great racing lined up tonight. We certainly do, and we're going to start off. Uh, we're going to jump right into it for our fans. We haven't had our expert open uh, qualifying heats yet. That's how we're going to start our live program here. It's pretty cool, Brian. I was talking to Leanne Dedman down there, the father of boy, or sorry, mother of boy Dedman. <laughs> And uh, anyway, she was saying how uh, how cool it was to have Boyd racing against Hunter again because they haven't raced each other since they were on 85s and kind of reflected on uh, how many of these now experts that I have watched since they were on 50cc machines come all the way up through the ranks. And uh, awesome. it, it's pretty cool. I'm kind of like a proud papa up here. Yeah, oh, for sure. I can I can uh, get that vibe as well. It's really awesome. And, and boy, did Deadman ever keep... Uh, keep them honest there in that, in that one heat race. They were swapping the lead, and uh, Hunter Bauer, Showtime, uh, came up with the win. But, but boy, Deadman was right there, and he wasn't intimidated with the success that um, Hunter's had down the south. Of course, he got that third in the AFT at Weed Sport on the podium. You were at the event and helping out in the pit, so uh, a lot of pride there for all Canadians. Uh, but to see young Boyd in there just mixing it up, super cool. And, and I talked to Boyd about the upcoming open expert race. And of course, uh, unlike the American series, our rules are a lot different. It's basically run what you brung, right? It's an open class and literally you can run anything. And we will have DTX machines out here. We will have the, uh, the Rotex singles and we've got uh, Dominic Bolak on that uh, beautiful XR750. And I don't care how he does in the race, he's gonna have some fans here before the night's over just with that thing rumbling by. Yeah, it's a totally cool bike and a cool individual. Bulak has won championships here in Canada, the French Canadian rider bringing that XR750 here. And remember back in the day, that was the standard bike, um, that XR750, and what a fast machine. And we can see some of the pros out there lining up across the track, just over at turn three, and nice shot there on our monitor anyway of the number 16 of Dave Pouliot down from Quebec, and Dave is, is super fast um, on any motorcycle. And uh, we're looking for good things from that Kawasaki Canada rider here tonight. Uh, Jimmy the Jet McCullough on the number nine framer. Uh, Todd, you might have a little insight on the machine at, uh, the Jet is riding tonight. Well, actually, it's, it's got a pretty storied history, although, albeit not quite all in racing, but uh, that's a former Brad Keto bike uh, who was one of our veteran riders for many, many years. Sean Hoy owned it briefly, and then uh, Jimmy uh, picked it up from Sean Hoy. What's really cool about that bike is that bike was actually used in an Evil Knievel movie. Wow, and, uh, super cool. <laughs> J Jimmy didn't even know that. I told him today. He's like, so this bike has been jumped? <laughs> so, so, well, I don't know how it played out in the movie. You take but, it back. <laughs> yeah, but, but I know it's in the movie. So, I don't think he's getting a refund. No, I think he was look, checking out the frame pretty good. After Probably I worth him, more now. Told him about it. Well, I, I actually did a, a magazine story about it a few years back because it's, it's just cool to come yeah. across stuff like that, right? That's well, one of the cool things of being involved in uh, this kind of thing. So, yeah, and, and Jimmy McCullough, he took a, well, I mean, we all had a year off, but uh, he didn't really join us last year as well. It's great to see him back, and, and one of his sponsors, Ted Townsend, picked up this, this uh, Rotex for him. So, you know what? I, I think he's po possibly back to stay kind of thing. So and, and, come on, one of the best names on the is Dominic Bouliak out of La Belle Province, and uh, he's all business and pretty racy, that bike his has a sweet
problem. Got the number 46 over there. That'll be Sean. Of, uh, I believe he lives in Elmira now. Just outside of Kitchener. Yeah, so Hoy's out there in the staging. He has been at this uh, for many, many minutes. And me and him, uh, uh, we, we talk back and forth quite a bit on, on the old social media. And he, he, uh, he likes keeping up, up to date on everything. out on the uh, report that the track is a little and just a bit before the account and now with a, a little bit of that moisture Todd the lighting change with the sun coming down a bit the ruts and ground prevalent you couldn't really see them much earlier so you can really kind of see them out of turn four onto the front straight and one, they seem to be quite a bit deeper where they enter at Greed, so those are kind of the, the area, and that's kind of the deceleration zone, and, and uh, man, it is, uh, it's pretty rutted out. So. Brian, we did not notice that at all earlier on, but no. it, it, and a little bit of moisture in there, you can definitely see and that. That's right about the point where, unless, well, unless you're Peter Griffey, that, that they're uh, pitching it sideways and grabbing a handful of throttle. So the factory out here in Chagam will try and get rid of just a touch. That moisture, of course, as the sun starts going on, it's very much a chess game. And man, I'm glad I'm not doing that and I'm up here instead. Yeah, that of a weight on one's shoulders and you're responsible for the track. Midnight's an expert back here shortly. And this is the framer. Class, uh, we're some pretty hot iron out on track once we get started. Yeah, and of course, uh, given our rules, we will see some DTX machines as well. And uh, it, it's hence open expert, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, as, as I look at the track conditions right now, and as we try and work in that moisture, of course, tear offs are going to become a premium. And uh, yeah. if we have any new viewers out there, the tear offs uh, usually put, uh, well, you, you guess on how many you think you might need for a race. Could be uh, three or four, or could be seven or eight or more. They're just little th thin films that uh, you pull off every time you need some new vision. And it, it's always, uh, well, it's very frustrating as a rider, obviously, but it's uh, as a fan and a guy up here in the booth, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that guy reach up for a tear off, Take usually the kids, and then you see that bouquet fly off. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's definitely not what you want to see when they're going for a tear off, because if, if your visor starts getting dirty, we discussed it earlier, and you have to start wiping that visor, you were just grinding all kinds of scratches into there. And, and you know, uh, the more tear offs you layer on, your visibility does distort slightly. Um, the old school tear offs anyway and uh, you know you can kind of get some air bubbles between the tear offs and all kinds of problems can arrive with the with the visibility in the tear off system like Todd was saying you you get in a panic and you reach for it and you take them all off at once and like he says the bouquet of tear offs go flying and then the riders uh, wiping and and this stuff right here that we're involved with with this uh, with the screenings or pea gravels starts to really stick to the riders like the visibility of the bikes looks like they just came out of a quarry, and there's my friend Freddie Dath down there saying a hello. I would give him the finger, but that's not polite. <laughs> the inverted peace sign. <laughs> Great to see you, Freddie, and always has the best haircut in the pits. <laughs> Brian, I think we're just going to take this opportunity as we try and uh, sort this track out a little bit. We're going to go do an interview I did a little bit earlier nice. on with Hunter Bauer. Nice. Hunter Showtime. Todd Valley here, Flamborough Downs for uh, Flat Track Canada round three. Joined right now by Hunter Bauer. Hunter, uh, you won that first race in Welland uh, two rounds ago. Tell me, uh, tell me what that was like. 
Um, it just like the bike was just dialed in. Dad had it like on fire, and uh, track was good. And we just had to twist the throttle all night, and we got it done. And uh, I couldn't thank the team enough for it. Now it's uh, it's unfortunate you couldn't join us in Quebec, or no doubt you'd be up near the points lead. You're, you're in Flamborough today. Uh, you've raced this track before. It's been a couple of years. Uh, what can we expect to see today? Uh, hopefully to run up front on both bikes. Um, yeah, I've been here. 2019 was our last run, and we uh, got third and uh, fourth or something. But uh, we ran really good here, so I'm ready for today and excited. I guess what I should mention as well, of course, uh, Hunter is taking part in the uh, full AFT series on this NKR Canada team. And uh, we happened to be in New York three weeks ago. You got your first podium, you got a third, you got another top 10 last week in Pennsylvania. I believe you've probably got, what, five or six top 10s in a row. It's, uh, it's really amazing. You're kind of the little fish in the big pond and uh, what you guys are doing out there. Tell me how that is. Uh, it's awesome being around everybody there, like uh, big million dollar teams and uh, doing what we're doing, keeping up in like consistency, staying top tens. And uh, the podium was awesome. Like it, the feeling you can, I never felt before. And uh, I hope to feel it again sometime. And of course, uh, we, we can't uh, not mention Nikki Kendall, who's running your team. And I guess it'd be silly not to mention uh, your dad, Bob, who's down there, of course, wrenching right now. Bob is uh, kind of the team driver, the nutritionist, I assume, and uh, team mechanic. They, these guys, your parents have been behind you forever, but tell me what it's like in the AFT series, having these guys uh, back your program and support you so much. For sure, like it, it's awesome having everybody I do behind have behind me. Um, Having my parents be behind me ever since I was just a little guy and coming to AFT with me, it, it doesn't bring stress on me because I know everything that's going on and I know how they're going to act if I do crap or do good. Like, it just doesn't, the stress levels are low. Just having a good time, everything's good. So, Awesome. We, uh, we look forward to seeing you tonight, hopefully out front, Hunter. Thank you, Todd. A little talk I had with uh, Hunter Bauer earlier, and uh, again, one of these kids, I first actually featured him in a magazine story when he was on a 50. Uh, that's how long I've been watching this kid. Wow. He, he's not that old, really, so <laughs> so I guess, uh, but, you know, he, he's, again, having uh, pretty good success down in the AFT series, which is really cool. Other teams are coming to talk to him and stuff and giving uh, support and uh, advice, and that's really cool. And uh, man, I look forward to see uh, seeing him go out here tonight and the family aspect. His his, uh, his mom and dad are in it full tilt. They could not be in it more than they possibly are. So that was an awesome interview. Great work, Todd. And now we've got the little diskette machine on track, and that's really taking care of some of that moisture. So uh, great, great work from our track crew to kind of churn it up and then have the great smoothing it out. That's going to maybe take out some of those ruts too, and just get this track that much faster. So uh, just a little bit too much moisture there before this. So hopefully they can get it churned in and the, the pros will get out there and give them the green light here shortly. We've got all the powers that be out on course, kind of checking it out. And uh, there's a nice shot on our monitor of the uh, John Deere's in action. Little uh, vehicle up front, it's got a, a disc. And then the, uh, the big flat screen there just to kind of work it in hopefully get this dried out nice satisfactory for these expert riders well i see uh, aaron hesmer down there uh, trying to watch over what's happening on the track and i think we're going to take this opportunity brian just to show another interview i did earlier on with dave pouliot sounds good joined here at flamborough downs by uh, dave pouliot of course racing he's got hall of famer john parker in the background here working along with his dad steve dave uh, two weeks ago at quebec Tell me how that went. It looked like a pretty good show from your end. Yeah, it was really a good night for sure. Like beating one of the best, it's always feeling awesome. <laughs> and this uh, Flamborough Downs, this is one of those tracks that falls right into Dave Pouliot's wheelhouse. You know, the cushion track, you can go high, wide, and handsome. What can we expect to see from this number 16 machine tonight? Uh, yeah, I had a lot of success here, and I think we can do really good here again. Like, I hope so. Uh, we're going to pull for the win for sure. Awesome, and uh, I know uh, racers don't like to say this. Who's your biggest competition out here tonight, Dave? Me. <laughs> there you go. Watch for the number 16 of Dave Pouliot out front tonight. Good luck, Dave. Thanks.
Nicely job, Todd. Nicely done, Todd. No, another great interview. And Dave Pouliot, what's he saying there? Biggest competition will be himself. It's what do you What do you think he means by that? Kind of joking, but really, you're your own worst enemy out here. Getting a little too confident, maybe coming in too hot. Uh, how, how do you How do you dissect that uh, comment? I think it's just all about what's going on uh, inside that helmet. Uh, we We know he's got the talent to run out front, and it's funny if I go back uh, a couple weeks ago in Quebec. He told me at the start of the night that uh, don't worry about the prize money tonight. I've already mo wrote my name on the envelope <laughs> and it seemed to work out for him. And uh, a little later on, we'll probably see an interview I did with Tyler Seguin. And Tyler Seguin has made the same prediction here tonight. So uh, yeah. a little bit of cocky confidence going on in Canadian flat track. And you, I, you know, I don't you, mind it. Really. You, you got to have it, man. You got to have that self-belief or it ain't going to happen. So these guys got it in spades. So we are in for a treat tonight and get this track just kind of, it is looking pretty. Pretty mushy though still, uh, Todd, and I tell you, tear-offs, we talked about it, gonna be an issue here. Yeah, we don't, uh, obviously we, we need, the riders have to have perfect vision when they're out there riding. We saw, who was it earlier, Gumby? We saw him at one point yeah. uh, earlier on Do, today. Doing the 100 mile an hour finger wipe. <laughs> yeah, because he, he went for a tear-off the lap earlier and uh, they were all gone. He didn't realize <laughs> he had gone through them all. And yeah, it, it, it's a terrible situation when you have to start wiping mud off that visor because uh, although it gets you a bit of vision at the time, you're going to be changing that visor when you're done that race because you that visor is probably garbage. You know, I used to do it so much, I put an extra like little uh, wing of tape on the first one so I could get that first one without, you know, taking the whole bouquet out with it. So uh, just kind of giving a little bit more of a hand pull because you reach for that thing, let's face it, you're in a little bit of a panic. So, uh, you know, there's lots going on. So... Taking the hand off the bar is uh, not that much of an opportunity to grab a tear off here. Well, I saw uh, I saw Seguin earlier on in practice actually pull two tear offs as he went through the turn. Mid, mid slide. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a pro right there. Well, yeah. he, he's also thrown out that deuce finger. Yeah, you know, that, that cool yeah, pitcher yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, that's super and, super uh, rad. It, it's it's kind of uh, fun, <laughs> funny, I guess. I can think of at least two circumstances in the past where some of our younger riders have done tear offs for the first time and mom and dad maybe just a little bit new to the sport and uh, they put the tabs on the right side of the helmet oh. so there's nothing better than that youngster wide open down that straightaway and then taking their hand off the throttle to reach up <laughs> and pull that tear good off. Way, good way of going first to last. <laughs> yeah it only happens once and uh, <laughs> as we uh, continue on with our track prep Brian I think we're going to uh, have a little talk with Dylan Bix because I think that young lady has some pretty exciting news to share. Here at Flamborough Downs, just joined now by uh, intermediate number 11, Dylan Bix. Dylan, man, did you put on a show in Quebec. Thank you so much. That night was awesome. Came all the way back from the back row. Um, I fall started and I ended up taking the win. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I don't know if you could actually tell under your helmet, you made a lot of new fans there that night. I was really pumping you up and uh, they, they really, I mean, they cheered for everybody, but I think you gained a lot of new fans there that night. Yeah, watching the video back, just the crowd went wild when I made that last pass and uh, just the little girls coming into the pits was so heartwarming. I gave them a couple hugs and took a couple pictures and it was really cool seeing the, the younger generation coming up and yeah, it was really neat. Well, it's kind of funny you talking about the younger generation. It doesn't seem like that long ago you were that little girl. Um, I understand, uh, I may be wrong, but from that ride in Quebec, did uh, some big news possibly come out of this? So uh, I had a talk with Darius, Jerry Stinchfield out of um, Dallas, Texas Roof Systems, and uh, there might be some big things coming in the future. Um, yeah, we had a talk, and he's helping me out with a couple things right now, uh, just sponsoring me, but there's some big plans, and I'm really excited. <laughs> So how cool is that for you? How cool is it for Flat Track in general that Roof Systems of Dallas is now involved in Flat Track in Canada? But uh, good for you, young lady. You've always been one of my favorites. We'll be, uh, I'll be secretly cheering for you from up in the booth tonight and hope to see this number 11 up front again. Thank you. Like, this is so unheard of, and it's just, it doesn't even feel real yet. Like, honestly, it's crazy. <laughs> Watch for the number 11, ladies and gentlemen. So funny thing, Brian, while that uh, heat race was taking... Uh, or sorry, while that interview was taking part with Dylan. Um, and again, I did ask her when I got over there if she had time to do the interview. And she said yes. And so we did our interview. Well, for, sorry, first she asked me when her heat race was up, and I have no idea when her heat <laughs> race is up. That's not my job. Not my pay grade. No. And uh, anyway, we, ha we had that great talk. 
and uh, she had a heat race earlier on. We saw her win, and we, we thought she had a fantastic ride. And lo and behold, my wife Kim shoots me a text and says, guess what, Dylan missed her heat race when she was doing your interview. She came out in the other heat race, but now she's been DQ'd. So once again, much like a couple right. weeks ago, different circumstances, but we're going to see that young lady starting at the back of the pack in the open intermediate race. And I, I feel almost a little bit guilty, but I really did ask her. Well, she was yeah definitely DQ'd from that win, but... Uh at least able to ride the night program penalized to the last row and the final starter so that might get her a little fired up todd because you know you just in that interview which is a great interview as well uh she went from last to first so i uh, wonder if she can do that again tonight she has the skills and the possibilities and the races are longer here uh, as well so she's got a few more laps to catch up and how cool is it to uh get uh, roof systems with dallas involved in uh, i mean well jumped on board with dylan but just to have them uh, show up in our series yeah talk to jerry in quebec and just a fantastic racing fan and uh, he, he's all in as i said i i wouldn't want to play poker against him and it's nothing about any kind of poker face i just know every hand he would be all in kind of yeah. thing and, <laughs> and he is totally into this racing game i'm not sure if you're watching jerry right now but Man, it was a pleasure talking to you a couple of weeks ago, and um, it's pretty cool that you're involved with uh, Dylan's career now. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing when uh, when enthusiasts, you know, uh, walk, you know, they can they can talk the talk, but uh, also walk the walk and and invest into the sport and into their teams and riders and and help people out. It's just fantastic to have people like that uh, in the sport, and uh, it's a bit of a family atmosphere down there. Everyone's helping each other, but you know. Everyone wants that win and everyone wants those bragging rights. So uh, a little more serious down in the States uh, when it comes to, you know, sw sharing bikes and parts. But up here in Canada, it's amazing uh, what happens uh, with parts and equipment uh, shared amongst fierce competitors. And they might not be sending each other Christmas cards, but they want to see them all on the starting line and, and win fairly. Yeah, for sure. And I, I happen to be here at the beginning of the day and... Uh Dylan got a nice little package, and she was opening up, and it's new graphics for the bike, and uh, a beautiful rear wheel from uh, Lowry Racing, uh, Jeffrey Lowry making those, and uh, she's never had a quick change wheel before, so she's pretty excited about that. There's no more when you want to flip that tire. They don't have to get out the tire spoons anymore. They can just pop it off, pop that gearing out, swap it around for the brake, and they're good to go. Awesome. So, uh, and again, this is all uh, thanks to uh, Roof Systems of Dallas being involved, and Wow. How, how, how cool huge. is that? That's yeah, she, huge. She was like a kid at Christmas there earlier on, and uh, I'm not sure if anybody got a picture of her face to send to Jerry, but uh, yeah, she, was, <laughs> she was pretty excited. That was a great interview, and I don't know any of you race fans or yourself that ever been down to Dallas. It is just uh, what an awesome city, what an awesome state. Just love Texas, and uh, just so awesome to have one of our young up-and-coming riders get the attention of a uh, pretty big deal down the states and in flat tracking so uh yeah just love that warm texas hospitality for uh young dylan beaks and we're just going to be keeping our eye on on that relationship and and on that team and what happens when when a team owner like that starts to help a young canadian now the focus is on that team and and unwittingly that team has just generated a whole host of new fans oh, like people that might not have had them and, and now they're going to be like wow these are the guys that are helping out our gal now they've got we're in 110 percent to support that team and all their riders so uh yeah real real good move there and it's super 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 pumped to hear about it yeah she's uh and hopefully uh she puts on a good jar charge from uh, the back of the pack later on and i think as we continue to circle around the track we're just going to go to a quick little talk with brent thompson flamborough downs once again joined by uh brent thompson brent one of these guys that constantly uh ridicules his own talent level but man when you get out there you know how to go uh, I don't know about that I like to get around with those boys but uh, there's no lie about it those guys get around so fast and I'm just happy to be out there with them well me and you have uh, both gone to the same team fat guy wardrobe yes, sir. and uh, that's probably part of it but you know sometimes weight is traction on that rear tire that's what I always say weight is traction and sometimes it helps out but you get in that deep stuff over there as I just learned it's not so much help so we, we'll figure it out now, I don't think there's anybody in the pits who has more fun than Brent Thompson, and uh, I even saw pictures of you last week using a cricket at the track, which uh, for all the ladies out there, they're going to love that. What was going on with the cricket? 
Well, I mean, you know, you got to be good at everything, right? So, uh, plus you got to get on your feminine side a little bit, I believe, as well. So, you know, Tyler says he needs some uh, numbers, and I pull out the cricket. So, that's kind of how it goes. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to seeing uh, this machine running up front tonight. It really doesn't matter where you run. I'm sure you're going to have a smile on your face. Absolutely, man. That's all that matters. Good times only. Awesome. Have a great night, Brent. Thanks, Thanks dude. So bikes on track here, Brian. I can imagine uh, after this track prep, uh, we see our last tractor pulling off. We're probably going to give these riders a lap or two to check out the track. They will certainly let the referee know if vision is a problem. Obviously, we can't uh, we can't have them diving into the corners if they can't see anything. Pouliot's going to lead them along. That's uh, the 61B. That's Trent Pickle. He's on that borrowed uh, Brandon Newman machine. Hunter Bauer in his first ride on the Sail Racing Rotex. And we see, uh, I can hear the rumble from uh, the 30 machine as yeah. he heads through one and two. What do you think? I think the boys are going to get uh, a few laps here. Boys and girls, correct me. Um, I think they're going to get a few laps here to let it, let it work in a bit. Oh, no. They're just giving them the one lap, Todd. I thought maybe they'd give them a couple just to work it in. A little moist here on the inside of one still. Dave Pouliot, of course, our current points leader, pulling up to the front. He's sponsored by Canadian Kawasaki, John Parker Racing, Magic Screed, Moto Vanier, MD Distributions, English Cycle Center, Jim Garrett, 26 susp suspension, 60 helmets, light shoes, and Gartec. It's a pretty impressive list there, right? Along with the last one you missed, Orthoflex Custom Bracing, helping him out with his custom CTI knee braces. Well, that's, that's good to know. I apologize for missing that one, right? <laughs> It's in the small print. 10-4. <laughs> and there is, uh, there is Dominic on that Ooh. number 30. Wow. Of course, the uh, last Canadian to win a Twins event in AMA Racing in 2006. Up top here, we got Jimmy the Jet McCullough on that uh, before-mentioned Evil Knievel, Evil Knievel movie bike. Number nine right there on the outside. And uh, there is Taya Little. In the uh, with the pink and the yellow Suzuki. Oh, she's oh, fired up. I'm not sure if you caught when I interviewed her down there, Brian. But yes, the plan for her is to uh, to follow the the path that Hunter Bauer is taking right nice, now. Nice, nice. That's why she's jumped up into the expert class here. Okay, and uh, 46 is Sean Hoy right in there beside the jet, and it's green. Ladies and gentlemen, off they go. Trent Whoa. Pickle gets a good start on that 61B. Pickle's going to lead them into one and two. Pouliot hot on his heels in second. Here comes Dominic around the outside. Watch wow. that growl as he gets way up near that fence, Brian. Oh, he, he has to uh, throttle out of it. And now look at the acceleration down the inside of Pouliot. I thought Pouliot had that. So out of turn oh, four for Pouliot. the first time. Sorry, Pouliot blasts oh, there. Oh, his arm is up. Oh, Pouliot's no. got mechanical. Oh, that is not good news for oh, Pouliot. No, he is not happy. He was in the running for that uh, podium for sure. Well, this will, uh, he, he's going to have time to try and sort that out later on. But, of course, he's going to be at the back of the pack, even if he does get it fixed. So we got a challenge, it looks like, here for the lead. I mean, that is the big number 30 of Dominic Pouliot on that V-twin Harley Davidson, so he is getting the power down, but the 24 of Hunter Showtime Bauer, keeping him honest on the outside and then right up on the inside. Oh, Bauer, Bauer's starting to figure that bike out, I think, Brian. He's got about six laps under his belt on this machine here today, and I think he's starting to like it. He, he really looked good on it in practice, so he's getting better with every lap. He's not intimidated by the old Hall of Famer there on the inside, and it is Bauer into the lead, into turn one. Oh, boy. Oh, things got Woo. tight there. In between one and two, Dominic takes it back, but here comes Bauer on the inside. Back there enjoying the show, but loving to be in it was Trent Pickle on that Boro Brandon Newman bike. Side by side now, Dominic down on the bottom. Yeah, and here is that crossover again. Squares up nicely by Hunter Bauer. Takes his time with the tear off and uh, check out Dominic threw it in nice and controlled, but maybe boy. next lap he's got an eye there where he had a bit of advantage, but boy, could Hunter pull it out between one and two and uh, got that little secured window there of about a half a second. Here they come again, Todd, into turn one. Oh, and Bulak goes for the tear off. 
gapped him pretty good that lap. Yeah, Bauer has definitely put some real estate between oh, him and Bolak. He's going high. And now, uh, I mean, I'm not sure how many laps we have left here, Brian. I'm not sure if Pickle can make his way up to that second position. But uh, Bolak dropping off from Bauer at this point, and I think Bauer has got this bike figured out. Look at look at Showtime on the monitor right now. Just, just gorgeous through turn three. And here he comes into turn one. Hunter is uh, on rails, just loving that bike. And man, I, this is this is not good for the competition. No, we got about a lap and a half left here, I think, Brian, for our leader. And I don't know if you noticed Bolak last time coming by. He, a uh, couple attempts at a tear off there. He may be out at this point. And uh, probably the only spray he's getting right now is from his own front tire. <laughs> and look at Pickle, he's, he's still racy. White flag is up and now we got Taya Little is embroiled in her own little battle for fourth. That's uh, with Taya and Jimmy McCullough going at it. Yeah. Yeah, Jimmy the Jet on the outside, and so that is not over yet. Here comes Hunter, Showtime Bauer, elbows up. Look at that roost flying. Jeez, he looks good on that bike, man. Yeah, looks no. like it was made for him. Yeah, I think he's figured it out. A grandma right here in front of us down here in the uh, patio section. Loving that. So Dominic Rolak holds on for second. Pickle close behind in third. Here comes that battle. Looks like Jimmy McCullough is going to come out ahead of Taya Little and out of turn four for the final time, pushing the pack along. It's the 46 machine of Sean Hoy. Hoy was very quiet in that race. We He was making noise earlier this afternoon, but I don't know if he made a little setting change or not liking the wet surface. Well, but uh, he picks up the tail end of that pack. We're in, we're in that one of those sports, uh, well, the sport, where every single time you're on the track, it's probably different than the last time you were out there. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's very tough sometimes to figure out which way to go with changes. Do, do you make changes? And, uh, yeah, we mentioned uh, Showtime, I think, coming to terms with that bike. And there may be, uh, may be a little bit of a marriage going on there between him and a bike for the rest of the Canadian series. It, uh, that, it, that he's able to make. It would be, it'd be a shame not to. Yeah. The, it, way, the way he is at one with that machine, like... He just, he knew on it, and it just seems to fit him like a glove. So here we go, the 22 of Tyler Seguin. We've got Heat 2 on. This guy, he's no stranger to the checkered flag out of the Welland area, super fast, and he's on that framer tonight. So uh, looking for great things from him. Boy, Denman the 13, we spoke about him earlier. He is on the DTX. The 90, that's Brandon Newman out of New York. 19, that will be uh, Brandon Seguin. Six is Dustin Lambert, and 112 is Cody Marantet. We saw Marantet earlier in that DTX race look uh, real good. Real yeah. good. And La Lambert's no slouch on the number six. Well, there's yeah, there's a reason they've played it up to the expert level. Yeah, of course. man, man, we got some talent here. We, we, we've mentioned already, Seaman's already said his name's on the check tonight, but uh, Denton looked pretty good for a rookie earlier on as well. We're green, and it looks like Brandon Seaman's going to get left of the line. Newman with a fairly decent start, but uh, right now oh, it looks like Lambert is going to lead him into one and two. Marin's head on on his heels. Here comes somebody down on the inside. I believe that's a 22 of Sieglin. Sieglin was so tight in turn one that he kissed off that track marker, left it vibrating in his wake. So he is way down low. So we got ourselves a good little race here as they exit turn four. Four of them there. You can just throw a little tissue over them. Marantet on the 112 has to kind of back out of it as he tucks in for second. Oh, Marantet now drifting up the track, and uh, that's going to last Boyd Denman by his roost, I think. As you mentioned before, that roost is like hitting the brake pedal, and uh, it also leaves a few marks on the body. Yeah, it's some ser serious roost here. Oh, sure. boy, oh, boy, the 22 of Seguin looks good. Yeah, he's uh, trying to make that prediction come true, much like Dave Pouliot did in Quebec. Oh, we got close action. Wow. Marantet almost into the back of Brandon Seguin there. That was close. Marantet had to uh, get out of the throttle, and he went right up between one and two. And there it is, that wicked battle for third into turn three. So Seguin, side by side. Seguin still all alone out front. Back there in second, it's a 90 of Newman. Here comes Brandon Seguin. You can see Deadman now. He's uh, struggling for his vision. There's the battle on the monitor that we want to see. They're dicing it out right there. The number 19, that Seguin Brandon, the younger brother of older Tyler, brother. or sorry, older brother yeah. Tyler out front. So we've now got brothers running one and two. 
Tyler out front, Brandon in second. Good to see these uh, young lads having a good run. Newman staying in it here as he grabs a tear off. Geez, every lap, Ryan, these guys are pulling tear offs. I'd be curious how many they put on before this race started. Newman, Newman's bike looks like it's hooking up pretty good. So in third place, uh, let's see if Newman can remount the charge on Brandon Seguin. Seguin boys running one, two. That is kind of cool, keeping it in the family. But the battle for third is shaping up to be a pretty good one there. Yeah, Newman, uh, not sure if he knows he's got company coming. Oh boy, Denman with a great big slide out of that rear end going into turn one. That was, uh, <laughs> probably got the uh, heart rate going a little bit, or maybe it didn't. These, these riders are generally uh, cool as ice anyway. He lost definitely oh, a few tenths there. Seguin wow, is way Tyler. up yeah, yeah, the he, track. He is on the cushion and a half, and then some. And uh, there is the 22. His brother's actually catching him a bit. And then the 90, and wow, look at Deadman in fourth. I think he's gonna get it, Todd. He, he entered turn one so brilliantly there and just held the slide. He gained a lot of ground on third place. So yeah, Newman perhaps under fire, just over a lap to go. Gonna watch for Deadman to cut it to the bottom of the track as our there leaders goes, come out there of four. Goes. Yeah, Deadman at the bottom, our leader, Tyler Seguin into one, his brother hot on his heels. Deadman has not given up that fight for third, Brian. Oh, there goes Deadman. He is in third as they exit turn three. No, and just gets it taken away as fast as he got it in turn three. Let's see if Deadman can do that crossover. Looks like Tyler is going to have it. It would be a pretty quiet ride home if the young, if the uh, older brother got him. So Tyler Seguin is going to leave this one from start to finish, and on that. Uh, Newman holds on in that battle for third, but I don't know if you noticed, Brian, uh, Tyler seemed to be really fighting the front end of that machine. At the end of the race there, Tyler seemed to be, uh, I don't know if struggling is the right word, but uh, Brandon just looked a little bit smoother at that point. Yeah, he had, a, he had a really commanding lead and Brandon actually reeled him in there, so pretty cool. So the, the, the news right now is, uh, can Dave Pouliot figure out what's wrong with that bike or does he go to a backup machine and unfortunately he's going to go to the back of the pack and i don't know if you remember when we were here a few years ago we had the stopwatch on pouliot in practice and he was the fastest one that day and his bike broke oh, and uh heartbreaker th this track just uh, doesn't seem to bring him any good luck travels a long way from uh oh god quebec yeah. city yeah and uh man oh man he's looking so so good and to uh, have a mechanical like that that is a heartbreaker todd so our vet final now coming to the line, Brian. We've got the uh, number 11, that's Yves Boisvert. We saw him have problems earlier on in one of his races. Uh, the 391, that's Bentley Thistleweight. I believe that is a uh, one of Kurt Beeger's bikes. We don't have Dustin Brown here tonight, and it looks like Bentley's found himself a ride. Uh, the 77, we called him earlier the grizzled veteran. He's been doing this forever, and uh, he, he, he's always a giver. He, he will not back out of it, and uh, that's Rick Gumby, and good on Rick for being out here. 233 Brent Thompson uh, had an interview with him earlier today. Great guy, nobody has more fun than he does. That should be the uh, 41, that's Chris Murray. Number five is Al Perry on that beautiful Yamaha we mentioned it earlier. I kind of want that like for my rec room, really. Oh man, yeah, that's all there right there. 737, that's uh, Daryl Ross, sorry, 787. I don't know if you heard me talking to him. Do you remember the International Hell Drivers? They used to put on those stunt shows oh, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. That was that dude. He, he told me down there that he got blown up in a coffin full of dynamite. There's only three guys in Canada have done that. <laughs> and only one of them's here tonight, so what's that telling you? Only one of them with us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but Glenn Brown back there on the uh, third row all by his lonesome on that number 19 machine. I wouldn't count that guy out either. All right. And they're going green momentarily here. It's a big... Oh, good start by Bentley. Gunby on that 77 just had that wheel spinning. He's got some work to do. Emily Thistleweight out front. I believe that's Boisbert in second. And then I can tell by the uh, posture on the rider in third, that would be the 233 of Brent Thompson. Oh, we got a challenge for the lead already. Boisbert is knock, knock, knocking on that door for the uh, first place position, Brian. He's way down low on that. Yes, he is. That framer has got way, way lower ground clearance than the DTX bike. Gumby now starting to make his way up through the pack. He finds himself in the fourth. So our leader, new leader, is Bois Air on the outside of turn two. We have Thistleweight. 
And then it's uh, Thompson shortly going to be under fire from the 77 machine of Gumby. And that is coming into turn three. Rick Gumby on the yellow, I'm sorry, orange KTM making the move on the red Honda. Looks like, looks like Glenn Brown, who started in his own row, has made his way up to about fifth. Side by side Whoa. battle now between Gumby and Thompson. Right now, it looks like the winner of this battle so far is, uh, well, it was Thompson and Gumby comes right back. Bavier now stretching it out on that second place rider, the 391 of Thistleway. And there is the pass for the uh, fifth place. That's Glenn Brown. He's made his way up from the back. So he is definitely charging on that number 19 blue bike. Made his way past Chris Murray. Perry making his way by. Then it's Hodovic. Sorry, Hodovic now coming by in the 61. That's Ross on the 787. So our leader once again through three and four. Doing a real good job of hugging the bottom of that track and keeping that momentum going. I'll say it's looking really good. The number 11 of Eve's Boards Verit out of Quebec. Very consistent here. He's not really going high, low. He's, he's maintaining the same lines, pretty much lap in, lap out. So that tells me he's in control. And he's going right where he wants to go. So it's up to the challenger here to, to make a move. If he can do anything on the last lap, the 391 of Bentley Thistleweight. He's close, but no cigar. There they are on the monitor. Get a really good view of them. Drag racing down. Here it is, Todd. Let's see if Thistleweight's got anything into turn three. He's got a lot of momentum there. Wow, does he? <laughs> I wonder if he can cut under here. Yeah, he's got to turn that bike down to the inside. I think that's the only no, chance he's, he's got. Too little, too late, maybe. He does do the crossover. Wow, he made it wow, close on that thanks. last lap, didn't he? Yeah, that he, was a gallon effort. Yeah, he made up a, a bunch of bike lengths. Gummy's going to cross the line in third, followed by Thompson. Then it's the 19 of uh, Brown. He separated himself from that battle he was involved in earlier. The 41, Chris Murray. Here comes the number five machine of Perry. And uh, there was a pretty good battle going on between uh, Dave Hodge and the 787 machine of Daryl Ross. Looks like Hodge has uh, won that battle. And, uh, wow, did Thistle Wade put on a charge in that last lap? Jeez, if he had just done that a lap earlier, he would have had that second lap. It's it's pretty awesome to see the uh, the full framers against the DTX bikes, and they seem like uh, overall fairly even. You know, fairly even. One's got an advantage here, the other one's got an advantage there, and it uh, seems to shore up in the middle somewhere. So it uh, comes down always in, in motorcycle racing, the rider. I mean, the machine definitely has a big say in the matter, but really, the rider, that is 70% of it right there, I'd have to say. Well, and, and of course, those machines vary very different. It's rider preference, right? There could be uh, a rider who really likes the way that DTX machine feels, or mm -hmm. could be a rider who is uh, much more at home in that uh, more rigid framed, you know, purpose-built flat track machine. Yeah, tr yeah. true that. And, and then the, the track conditions make a difference too, eh, Todd? Uh, and the soil, uh, whether screenings, more clay, dirt, choppy, shorter track, longer track, so many components to it. But it, it is, as we talked about earlier, it, it is a tuner's game with gearing, you know, motor, reliability. I love the uh, checkered flag victory lap, something that uh, is missing in a lot of uh, motorsports. Yeah, and it's, uh, well, this is, uh, I guess, the second one we've seen here tonight. And uh, we're going to get right into our novice DTX final. I talked to a couple of the riders in this race uh, during our brief break there. One of them being the number eight of Liam Kasky, who uh, assured me he has every intention of running up front. And I also talked to the 70 of Seth Little. And as shy as Seth was to talk on the microphone, much like his sister Taya was a few years ago, uh, he is not shy when it comes to twisting that throttle. <laughs> so I will not count out that 70 machine just yet, despite what Kasky tells me. But man, Kasky is one of those guys, and he may be the next Hunter Bauer or Dustin Brown, or he may be the next one we're talking about. So Kasky with gate pick, sorry, Brian. He goes way up to the top, and then just flipping the coin, we see Little, the second pick, go right to the bottom. Yeah, this is 
uh, pretty exciting to have the, have the number eight of Kaski on the line. And uh, he's a younger fella, but boy, is he big on talent. Now, just watching where the uh, 15 lined up here, I believe that's Matt Epp. Now, I'm not sure if they, we can't tell from here, maybe worn out if they've drawn that little uh, line that is parallel with the track, but he may be above that line. And uh, I certainly don't want to point it out to the referees, but if they catch that, they will be moving him. And I think that's what poor Jeffries is coming out to look at right now. As I said, we can't really see on the monitor where that line is. It's virtually gone, but see Ward pointed it out right now. See, Kasky thought he was up at the top of the track, and then along comes this 15 guy on that Kawasaki. And that is Kyle Steele, and then we've got Eric Oros as well on the second row on the 93. And that is a uh, big name here in Canadian flat track. Connor Thompson, 31 on the third row. We're getting revved up and amped up here. So Kasky's a little crowded all of a sudden. He is, but he doesn't care. He's looking at that green light, and there it goes. Good jump by the 15 of that. Let's see. I believe the, the, the good jump was the 15 T of Kyle Steele. Oh, the at, 15 T. Yes, F is the one on the Cowie. Okay, yeah. They, just, they gotta make it tough for us. Eh? Two guys in the same class have to have the same number. 15 and 15 T. Yeah. But uh, there is a three-way battle kind of pulling out for the lead, the number eight, great start, going from third to first real quick. Seth Little, going up second. Little, another one of those riders, Brian, just watching, slides way up on that tank going into the corner. Now you're gonna see him want to scooch that butt back over that rear wheel, trying to get that traction to the ground. Yeah, that's the new school, getting that uh, weight up front and up over the handlebars and then back into the arrow down the straights and just really getting that weight up forward. Third place rider just very composed, not really changing body position near as much as Seth Little. Very pronounced making, watching him make that transition into turn three and turn one. So Kasky now stretching it out, Brian, as he exits turn four once again. He's got, I would say, easily 20 bike lengths on Seth Little. So. Kasky, of course, we'll see him back out here in the Open Novice race later on on that beautiful Kurt Beaker racing framer. But uh, he's got things well in hand over Little right now. Little at the same time is uh, fairly safe in second. Battle shaping up the third now between the 15T and the 31 of Connor Thompson. Yeah, that is uh, shaping up to be a, a good little battle. So you can see the number eight full straightaway ahead pretty much there over Seth Little, and then here's a great race. Oh, oh they actually touch. Yeah. Oh, they they touch they touch handlebars. Thompson almost uh, comes off that bike. They they touched right here in front of us, and then things got a little hairy for Thompson about 35, 40 feet later on the track. <laughs> Rubbing so uh, Steele holding on to that position for now, but he definitely knows Thompson's there. Oh, Thompson's going for it, man. He was really initiating that slide early. He wants it. He wants it back. He's not too happy. Maybe with that contact. So the 31 of Connor Thompson is hungry as he battles the number 15. So Kasky now uh, getting into lap traffic as our second place rider, Seth Little. I don't think can do anything at this point, obviously, with our leader with two laps to go. But he is safely in second. The battle right now, right here it comes, is between Thompson and Steele. Once again, Steele's gonna hold on to it for now as they head down into one. There it is. It's down the back straightaway for the final time. So Kasky getting the last lap flag. Got a couple riders a lap down. Seth Little coming across the line here in a second. Oh, we've got Connor Thompson, jeez. That back wheel, we didn't have it on camera, was almost touching those hay bales up in turn four. Yeah. I don't know, honestly, if that was a line he tried or he <laughs> just ended up there. I think he was coming in so hot. Yeah. yeah. Full send. He was, yeah, he was fully sending it and ended up in the outfield there and lost a ton of time in that soft stuff. So Liam Kasky throws a tear off at the end, just like a, a statement there, I think, right? You, you, you gotta have good vision back to the pits. That's right, so Kasky. 
great run. And uh, Seth Little with a good ride in second, and Steele comes out ahead in that battle for third between him and Thompson. So, uh, yeah, Connor Thompson really had us on our toes there a couple times. The 111 making his way by. That's Miles Ward. That was, uh, that was pretty good rides. I mean, watching the number eight throughout the whole afternoon program, this isn't really a surprise. He was on rails and showed it right there in that event and took a commanding win on that Keith Kurt Vieger tuned Honda. I believe, if I'm uh, correct, that may be his mother, Jenny, on the back of that bike. And uh, I like the foot position of Liam right now. <laughs> He's elected to uh, let mom use the foot pegs. Well, well played, Liam. He knows what side his uh, bread is buttered on. Absolutely. All right, good job, mom. Woo. And again, folks, this is one of those names you're going to want to know for the future. Liam Kasky uh, has kind of been one to watch for a few years now. Just watching him, he really threw down that tear off with authority. So I have a funny story about a tear off. So my son way back in the day, probably on his 65 is the first time we used tear offs. Didn't need him on the 50s. Probably didn't need him on the 65s to be honest. But anyway, his first race he used a tear off. He pulled the tear off and had about four laps left. And at the end of the race, he handed it to his mom because he kept it. <laughs> <laughs> because apparently we're on a budget. Yeah, we're and on a budget and we don't want a litter. Yeah, and uh, well, the cool thing is my wife scrapbooked it. So, uh, oh, nice. but yeah, who pulls their first tear off and then holds on to it for the rest of the race? That's my boy. <laughs> Taught him well. Yeah, so proud. Hey, anyone hungry down there? Get over to curbside to the uh, food truck. Get yourself some, some grub. Of course, we have T-shirts for sale down here. We should mention that. I yeah, think, uh, for sure, right under the uh, Kawasaki uh, tent there. And you can see Jordan Zoke's beautiful two motorcycles all prepped up. And Jordan's down there doing posters and signatures. And you can come inside the bar here at the uh, casino and get yourself a, an ice cold beverage or a drink of your choice. And the uh, bar staff very friendly and taking care of all the race fans. Get yourself a tall boy or a beverage of choice Todd and it's a nice night for one I'd say oh boy look at this you believe we're putting a little bit more water on there it's almost just a bit of a mist I think what do you what do you think about that so a little more track prep going on Brian this is uh, scheduled we see Aaron Hesmer is out there keeping an eye on this we don't want to let it get away and uh, let's talk about some of the racing we've seen so far. Liam Kasky on that number eight uh, Kurt Beeger racing machine. Man, did he look good there. And yeah. pretty, pretty cool to watch him take mom for a victory lap. Yeah, that was sweet. And man, what a talent we have in uh, number eight Kasky. We're going to see great things from him as he advances through intermediate and uh, no doubt to expert one day. And Kurt Beeger in behind him, one of the premier tuners, uh, X racer in uh, Canada. So uh, he is being well groomed, Todd. Yeah, and a couple of stories to uh, keep our eyes and ears on. Uh, of course, we've got Dylan Bix being forced to the back of the pack right. <laughs> earlier on, partly because of me. And uh, Dave Pouliot, unfortunately, our, our current points leader and uh, latest race winner, uh, something went wrong with that machine. I mentioned yeah. uh, earlier that a, a few years ago when we were here, he was the fastest rider in practice and the thing just grenaded. And th the kid just doesn't have any luck here, but I hope what they can it? sort it out. But once again, if he does, he's coming from the back of the pack. Yeah, what a shame, man, because he is such a thrilling rider. Um, so let's just hope that it's something minor and they can get that sorted out. And uh, again, as we talked about the tuners game, so let's hope that uh, we can see him as the night progresses on that uh, full frame r flat track specific race bike. Uh, so yeah, that would, uh, that would just be great for the fans as well. He's come a long way from Quebec City and great for Kawasaki. You know, Kawasaki stepping it up here this year with Flat Track Canada and uh, engaging as uh, one of the premier partners. Uh, just love to see those green bikes uh, on the grid and doing well. And uh, a real treat to have Jordan Zoke here, here signing posters and to see that just beautiful super bike under the tent and his flat track machine with that low Vance and Heightens. A pipe and those uh, mag wheels that is a, a sweet sweet bike and I think uh, another guy we forgot to mention right now is uh, Tyler Seguin he plans on being a player in this one and I talked to him a little earlier today we're gonna check that out here at Flamborough Downs with uh, Tyler Seguin on the 22 machine uh, you're riding I believe this is uh, is this a sail bike you're riding here tonight 
Yeah, this is uh, the Sail DTX. Um, I'll be riding this in the DTX class, and then I'm on uh, Chris Evans' Rotox for the Open. Chris Evans, of course, dealing with a shoulder injury. It's unfortunate we can't have him out here, but I guess not so bad for you. You get to hop onto those finely tuned machines. Yeah, I mean, uh, me and Chris have had um, a really good relationship over the years now. Um, we've built a, a pretty good base, and uh, yeah, we got a, a good herd to pick from, and you know, we got these bikes out here going good. Now, you told me earlier on today, maybe I shouldn't be mentioning this, but we might as well just put your name on that first place envelope already tonight. So you're feeling pretty pretty confident. I was going to say cocky. I guess confidence is the word we want at this point. Yeah, um, I had a, a lot of uh, confidence going to the Quebec a couple weeks ago, and it, it didn't turn out how I wanted it to. And, uh, you know, I've gone over laps in my head for the last two weeks, and I know what I've done wrong and what I need to do. And uh, we just went out for practice, and, man, I, I really – felt good so I mean it uh, it helps going into the night show after a good practice like that. Awesome and uh, for those not in the know Tyler Seguin is our youngest ever Canadian Open Expert champion now that was in the now defunct series not a flat track Canada champion yet but with uh, Dustin Brown getting hurt this championship has been blown wide open hasn't it? Yeah I mean uh, I'm even heading into this I think that there's three of us at the at the front and, and we're all within I think six points but now uh, of course with Dustin out it makes it even tighter now for me and Dave so I know he's going to be he's coming out full tilt and I mean so am I so it should be a it should be a, a barn burner at the end here so, we'll, so yeah. I know we'll be loving it up in the stands and we'll be watching for the number 22 to be making his way to that first place envelope. Thank you. So great talk there with Tyler Seguin. We mentioned how, uh, and I'm going to keep mentioning it, because I did to Dave and it worked for him. But Tyler said uh, he, he's already figuring his names on that first place envelope tonight. And we mentioned how important it is to have that confidence, and he certainly has it. I love it. Absolutely love it. And we, uh, for those that don't know, our uh, current points leader and three-time Flat Track Canada champion Dustin Brown is out with a broken leg. So uh, the way the points sit right now, our leader not counting Brown, would be Pouliot, and he's just uh, three points ahead of Tyler Seguin. So things could change here a lot with Pouliot having bike problems earlier. Yeah, that uh, is really a shame with Dustin Brown, an another rider that's just, uh, he's the type of rider that, you know, the camera could just be on him the whole race, and it would be an awesome show because uh, he really, really maximizes every single section of the track when he's out there he rides the track he rides the bike he rides hard and he rides to win and that is why he is a multi-time champion young dustin brown so dustin if you're out there watching brother we are wishing for a speedy recovery and uh, doesn't sound like we'll be seeing you back this year a pretty substantial break of that tip fib with surgery uh, so we wish you a speedy recovery we've got uh, as we get our intermediate dtx final lining up here looks like we had uh, the 38 of Isherwood trying to line up, I think, further outside than we allow. As we said, we can't really see that line in that first row. We can definitely see it in the second row. We should point out some of the other riders on our first row. We've got the 94, that's uh, Adrian St. Amon. Of course, I know you're a fan of him. I think Rupert might be in there on the 100. It's hard to pick out now. 38 is Isherwood. 31 is Felix Danderan. The 909 will be Rod Scott. And uh, I'm trying to figure out who I've missed on that front row. Back here in row two, we've got Dylan Bix. We're going to keep our eyes on her, that's for sure. Yeah, the number 11 there. She is uh, super fast. And Great. on the inside, we've got the 23 of uh, McClellan. And we've got uh, Mac Wilms in the middle of that back row. 290, Logan Wilson down on the inside. That's about missing on that front row. Right on. Oh. Great start by Dan Duran and Rod Scott. Look at Dylan Bix, Brian. She's going way up to the top of the track. She's already made her way past. Wow, she's in third. <laughs> she, she's in the third two court, but she just got absolutely blasted. We mentioned it many times. The roost. Our leader is Dan Durant. As I head into turn three for the first time, Rod Scott looking up the inside. Here comes Bix through the middle of that corner, Brian. I haven't seen her go for a tear off yet, so she's saving that. There she goes. Yep. So clear vision for Dylan. Nice move there by Dan Durant. But look at that up the inside. Bix doing that crossover move. She starts up top. She drops down to the bottom. Closes that gap on Rod Scott just in front of her. She's making her way past into three, Brian. What a nice slick move. 
She's got a nice controlled slide. The 909 of Roderick, he is uh, definitely a player. He holds on to second for now. He's, uh, yeah, he's made, remade that pass. And uh, Dylan looks a little smoother in those corners. Rod Scott right now kind of wrestling the hole there way up near that fence. I, I love the pink boots on Bix, so you can really see her from a far distance. And look how low she is able to hold that machine without drifting out too high on the exit. And see if she can carry that into a second place here. They're starting to reel in Dandoran. And look at Roderick makes a play. Could this open the door for Beeks to do the tuck under? Three-way battle for the lead here in Flamborough. Down the back straight, there goes Dylan Beeks. Looks like they're gonna make a play for Dandoran here. Maybe the two of them are just gonna slipstream by. They all seem very equally matched at this point, Brian, as far as speed goes. Dandoran, Dandoran holds on to it for now. Scott's still in second. Dick's trying to find some clean air up at the top of the track. She doesn't want to eat that route. She's going to cut down to the bottom and look wow. underneath Scott on the exit. Yeah, too. Scott makes a slight mistake there. Dandoran out front looks super composed. His body positioning, his body English. He is just letting the motorcycle do the work. He is super smooth. Let's see if Dylan Beeks here can upset him a little bit. We're at halfway point, ladies and gentlemen, so still a lot of racing to go. Dylan Beeks, number 11, settles into second place. She's looking really racy tonight. Oh, Rod she, Roderick Scott wants it back, though. Yeah, she uh, she drifted up high there a little bit on the exit of two. Dan oh. Dan dude, wow, Scott with a power move into three. Yep. Can he hold it down to the bottom now, or does Dix answer back on the exit of four? I, I saw Bix look behind, and then Roderick just screeched by and she just took it back but look how high she goes she ate she recovers really well Todd I thought she was out in the rhubarb into turn one but she held on she's got some strong arms on her to pull that heavy machine back down and now she is making a play on Dandoran for first place looks like Roderick he's hinged in the middle there so he is losing more time there comes Dylan Beeks down the front straight away side by side Bix and Dandoran Dandoran oh. knows he has company. Bix is going to go up top. She's going to try and cut down to the bottom. What a power move by Dylan Beeks there to just get to the outside. Pass right around the outside of turn two. So Dylan Bix is... Uh, so Bix chops in front in between three and four. Two laps to go, Brian, as they come to the line. Does Dandoran have an answer? Wow, the house lights just come on. Change the dynamic of the night. Look at that super, super bold move there by Dandoran. But no, he cannot answer to young Dylan Beeks out front from that penalty on the last row. She actually went from last to third right on the first two turns. And what a well-deserved race so far. I'm not going to say win. We've still got a lot to go and anything can happen here at Canadian Flat Track. they got fans cheering down there and uh, how awesome is Dylan Bix with that new roof systems of Dallas sponsorship coming from the back to the front and uh, she's now got all kinds of real estate between her and that second place rider Dan Durant. Dream come true race for Dylan Bix. Boy, she earned that, Todd. She showed race craft. She showed poise. She showed patience and obviously confidence taking the W with a fist pump. Well deserved for Dylan Bix. Great ride. Dandoran, who had that lead most of the race, has to settle for second. And Scott finishes third. I'm surprised by Saint Amon because he was really into the battle in uh, Quebec. And uh, he just he, he wasn't it. He didn't get a great start and wasn't able to catch up to that group. But uh, did you see the fans uh, cheering for Dylan as she went by? Yeah, that was... They've obviously heard their story and they're pretty pumped. Yeah, that, that was really cool. I mean, Santa Amand looked awesome this afternoon in practice and stuff, but just uh, a little lonely there in fourth. So great ride in our uh, intermediate race. Who's Dylan got on the back here? We'll try and... Uh... Let me give a shout out to Jamie Grant watching in Tampa, Florida. Thanks for tuning in and uh, sending us a shout here in Flamborough Downs, just outside of Dundas, Ontario. And we're maybe uh, eh, an hour from the border of Buffalo, a little under an hour, actually. So just on the uh, QEW, we're right close to the good old US and A. So Dylan uh, has definitely gained some fans here. I just got uh, 
not, not only getting a text from my buddy Jamie, who's vacation in Florida because it's not hot enough in Ontario right now, <laughs> um, but uh, also got a, uh, my wife sent me a text from Marc-Andre Paget, who is no doubt watching in Quebec, uh, one of the primary uh, guy thrives behind Flat Track Quebec. He's the one that basically got uh, Jerry Stitchfield and uh, Brandon Robinson to head to Quebec, which has now led to Dylan wow. get, falling under that roof system's umbrella. It's just sweet the way everything falls into place there. Um, great backstory, Todd Valley. You are the man with your feet on the street. And uh, excellent intel here and love the victory lap. And there is uh, Dylan. Well, I'm a man, that's for sure. And uh, you know what? If I'm going to mention my buddy Jamie, then I better mention that is uh, his daughters, Katie and Allie, are watching us as well. So okay. th thanks for tuning in down there in Tampa, and I hope you guys are staying cool and having a good time. But Dylan Bix, uh, we're going to hear her name uh, for a long time to come, and I think you've got yourself a good one, Jerry. And uh, thanks to uh, our systems of Dallas for jumping on board. She, she's pumped up. And we're going to see her back out here in the open <laughs> interview. That was an awesome display, man. What a great race. What a great facility. I mean, this track is just made for this. Super high speed, and I think the riders all enjoy uh, this this terrain, Todd. Um, the grip it offers, kind of the, the whole facility. Uh, just love it here at Flamborough Downs. I tell you, this race has been on and off uh, the past few decades, actually, and uh, many a night here watching racing under the lights, and uh, it's super great to be back an awesome venue and of course a uh, reminder to all our fans that are here tonight that if you're enjoying yourselves and you want to do this again i believe it's five weeks we'll be in georgian downs in uh, innisville yeah uh, just before barry there another track very similar to this or sister tracks actually and what i always like about going to georgian downs when we get up in that booth is comparing the bikes on the back straightaway to the speed of the cars on the hi on Highway 400. Yeah, they're and it's passing really, the cars. It's really never close, is it? Yeah, yeah and the, the cars <laughs> are all doing, you know, 120 or 70 miles, 70, 80 miles an hour, and uh, these guys are just gapping them down the uh, back straight. Yeah. And, and, and then you've got to pitch it into a corner, right? yeah, like yeah, nothing's yeah, going on. Yeah, with no front brake. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, actually, it's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, that's just maybe an hour and change from here, so up towards uh, just south of Barrie, Ontario. So I hope anyone that uh, is enjoying their night today come up to Georgian Downs. A lot of people be maybe coming down from the cottage or on the way up. And uh, again, a similar facility to this, uh, a horse racing facility on the screening. So, uh, but it's just a little faster even. Well, I talked to a gentleman down here earlier. It's his, uh, he's, he's a vintage motorcycle rider. This is his first flat track race. He was pretty pumped about being here, but he, uh, he's from Toronto. And I said, well, you know, you, you made the drive here. And if you're looking for something to do in about five weeks, another hour up that 400, you'll, you'll be at another pretty cool track. And we get uh, we get really busy in September, Brian. I don't, I don't know if you've looked at our schedule, but I think uh, four out of about five weekends we have races. We have uh, Innisfil, Georgian Downs. We have Humberstone Speedway. We have Wheatley. And then uh, October 2nd or 3rd, I haven't confirmed that yet, um, we're going to wrap it all up in Sarnia on that uh, beautiful cushion track there. It's wow. been a few years since we've been there as well, wow. but man, there's some good racing there always. Jeez, that's, that's a heck of a schedule, and that's some, some great tracks. Um, man, oh man, uh, even even you know, Wheatley, the smallest of those tracks, still provides some really good racing, and that's like that more clay, uh, old school dirt, um, and, a, and a pretty decent facility, and then Hiawatha, that's where we were years, a few years back. That's where we walk across the roof to get into the booth. That's right. That's, that's right. Yeah. And there's a pretty good banking uh, there and a really wide runoff, so pretty safe for the riders. Uh, and again, really high speed and, and thrilling. Well, I talked to uh, Ben Evans, who is uh, one of the mechanics working for Brandon Robinson in uh, Port Royal, Pennsylvania last week. And he won a race back in Sarnia, I believe he said like 2006, 2007. And he would love to come back if we just get rid of that silly little uh, rule that Canada has right now to get into the country. But Sarnia is one of those tracks that, it, that is known for uh, producing some pretty good, great racing and having a pretty cool uh, track to race on. Well, don't you know that the, uh, the Minister of Travel said the Arrive Can app is uh, improving uh, our tourism? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. it's improving it. Hmm, I wonder what world he actually lives in. <coughs> Moron. Did I say that on the air? I'm so sorry. Okay. 
Brian, we, uh, we're getting into our expert DTX race as soon as we're done this little bit of track prep. Uh, I think I have one more interview we can play that is uh, a little talk I had earlier with Dominic Bulak. We will not see him in the DTX race, but he'll be out here on this Harley Davidson a little bit later on. So let's hear what he has to say about tonight. Sweet. Flamero Downs joined by Dominic Bulak. Uh, Dominic, it looks like uh, you've gone back to your roots perhaps. We're going to be seeing you on an XR750 here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for first time I rode the Harley till 2008, so yeah, but it's pretty cool. We got to practice with him, worked pretty well, nice bike. Well, if we go back a couple years before 2008, you had a pretty good run on one in Lima, Ohio, I believe. Yeah, they, they have a regional race at Greenville, Ohio, just before Lima, and I, I was there with, with my Rotax, and I, I, I won, the, I think, all the, all the main event I do. Hey, yeah, it was good there. At Trois-Rivières, yeah, we have not such a good good luck there. I got I got bike issue and uh, tra track was not all the setup I made with my bike was not good, so it's like that. Well, and I think you mentioned uh, you were hoping that the race would be 12 laps, not 20. Yeah, I'm, I'm 45 now, so I think with that big that big bike here, 12 laps is going to be good. <laughs> Well, I got to tell you, Dominic, you're going to have some fans out there tonight dying to hear that big thing roar. Yeah. Who do we have to thank for getting you back on an XR750 tonight? It's uh, Jim Gilbert and the uh, Black Black uh, Black Bridge uh, Black Bridge Harley Davidson sponsor us with that bike. That's good XR here. Yeah, We're yeah. good. Awesome. Well, we look forward to hearing this big thing roar tonight, and hopefully, it roars right to the front. Absolutely. That that's where we want to go. Okay. Have a great night, Dominic. Thank you. Oh, that was a classic interview. Good right. job, Todd. And uh, I love these riders. They tell it the way it is. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's it's, it's great. You just subbed in some words at the exact right time. Absolutely. Dom Dominic, uh, again, a little caught off guard, I think, by 20 <laughs> laps. A couple weeks ago, he was uh, he got penalized, unfortunately, in that race. Had to start in row four. And the funny thing is, I talked to him tonight about it. Uh, we did have a red flag. And after the red flag, he tried to sneak back into row one. And I said, Dominic, when you're wearing bright orange leathers, I don't think that works, dude. You're going to have to find leathers the same color as that track if you want to sneak up there. Well, you know what? You, uh, if you don't try, you're never going to get it. If you don't take, you're never going to get it. So he was trying to take it, and he got, uh, he got busted, but uh, no harm, no foul. Forg forgiveness? Is that how that goes? Yeah, he just, just asked for forgiveness. We, we had Hall of Famer Wes Pierce just jump up into the booth here, and he tried to f feed me a whole ton of information. I, I apologize, Wes. I couldn't take it all in. But he did want me to mention that next Saturday night at Welland is the final summer event at Welland County Speedway, Night of the Legends, 7 o'clock Saturday night. Welland uh, always come wow. fantastic racing, so Love you're going to want to be there. And uh, they have the fall classic that comes up in the fall as well. Go figure, fall yeah. classic in the fall. If you like what you're seeing now, uh, get yourself to Welland. And uh, it's a great night to, to take the bike out and uh, great track food there, great grandstands, great facility. Uh, they've done a ton of work there uh, a few years back. Hey, Todd, they brought in all kinds of new clay, resurfaced it, banked it. I mean, Welland County is legit these days, better than ever. It's always been legit, but boy, if they ever got that track looking good. And check out the 24, ladies and gentlemen. It is Hunter Showtime Bauer. That's on that KTM with the uh, orange mag wheels. Love yeah. that bike. Beautiful wheels made by Lowry Racing for that machine. And of course, that is the NKR Canada machine. That's a uh, team owned by Nikki Kendall. So cool to have a uh, hunter back here racing in Canada. Brandon Newman down on the inside of him, pulling up to his right. That'll be Trent Pickle on Newman's backup bike. 112 is Marin Tet. The 22 on the outside, Tyler Seguin. I don't know if you caught when I talked to him earlier. He said this is the first time he has ever rode a Yamaha. Yeah. We saw him struggling a bit in the corners. He'll be looking to turn that around. We go back to row two on the inside. That's Tyler's niece, Taya Little, in her rookie uh, expert year. Pulling up beside is a 46 of Sean Hoy. Pouliot back there. He's got some nice. ground to make up. Dustin Lambert on that six. Then it's a 391 Ooh. of Thistleway. Wow. And finally, we're going to be joined by the Jimmy the Jet wow. back there in row two. That row wow. two could win a race Ladies on any and gentlemen, day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, we're in for a treat here. And here comes Deadman. Yeah, Deadman sliding up to the front. A little, uh, little late to the dinner table here. We saw oh. we saw Jimmy the Jet try and sneak in there. He saw right. he saw the wave, and he tried to get in there. You can't blame him. Can't this blame is him. this this whole this whole race is full of household names. I mean, I'm telling you, this is going to be a good one. And it's great to see the 16 of Pouliot getting those 
tuning woes hopefully put to bed here. Lights are on, one more and we are green. Check out the jump. Great start by Newman if we're, uh, we're good. It is crowded going into turn one. Now we're sliding up a little high. Newman slides into the lead and then we've got uh, Deadman hot on his heel. Bauer back there in third, Ryan. Yeah, let's see if Bauer can make anything happen quickly. He does on Deadman in to second. He dives down the inside. Deadman, yeah. Deadman is not going away, Brian. No, he is this, this, legit. This rookie. Yeah, no, he's, he's got no respect for these guys who've been in this class for a couple of years. Pouliot's on the move, Pouliot all the way up to fourth. Wow, he looks good too. They're using all the track, check out. Bauer now diving down again, trying that move again, if he can make it stick this time. Wow, Bauer was hard on check the brakes Check out there. Pouliot, way low. Todd. Yeah, he's, that could be the fly in the ointment for these top three. So boy, Deadman, our rookie expert, leading the race. Former 85 CC foe, Hunter Bauer, hot in tow. But Newman and Pouliot are trying to become part of this mix. Oh, Pouliot stands it up there, but hangs on to it. Man, that was a bit scary there for the battle for third. Now look at Pouliot dive into turn three. He loves that low entry. Yeah, we saw the front end of Pouliot's bike tuck just a little bit there, but he kept the power on. Yeah, you had mentioned his front end being maybe a little askew here. Hunter Bauer now has that point position. Deadman there. Oh, Deadman the pushed way high, Brian. We got a three-way battle for first, and there it is. Boy, Deadman, number 13 and third, 16 of the Pouliot. Then it's the 24 of Hunter Showtime Bauer. Here comes Pouliot down low on the full framer. The DTX of Bauer. Oh, wow, no, that is full DTX. I'm sorry there, yeah. So that is the Kawasaki 450. Side by side. Dropping it with the KTM. Wow, look at the body English for Pouliot. Can you believe it? They're passing each other, lap in, lap out. We, oui. yes I can. <laughs> so Bauer now finds himself in second. Pouliot with about four bike lengths as they head into three and four. Bauer now has to find his way back to the front. The way he's got that bike black threw me off a bit, so we'll see if his frame is able to race later in the night. But right now, the 16 of Pouliot stretching it out just a little bit. But check out Deadman. That battle for third and fourth is keeping Hunter Bauer honest, Todd. Yeah, that Bauer for, or sorry, battle for third and fourth could just as easily be a battle for second here. And then there goes Pouliot now starting to put some real estate between him and Bauer. And then. The, sorry, but off screen there, the battle for that fifth place is just insane as well. Yeah, we got, we've got battles running. all over this racetrack right now. Nickel all alone right now in uh, fifth. Hot on his heels is McCullough, Aaron Tett, and Lambert. Taya Little involved with a battle with uh, Thistleweight back here as well. So Pouliot now with about uh, 12 bike lengths, Brian. He may be looking to check out on this one. He's carrying a lot of speed between 3-4 and down the front straightaway. Deadman, all he can do is, I'm sorry, uh, Bauer, all he can do is watch right now. And... What a confidence boost this will be for Pouliot right now, because he knows what kind of results Bauer's been having uh, in the AFT series. Yeah. Top 10s virtually every week. And uh, as we can see, there's now about 15 bike lengths. Pouliot just oh. extending that gap, laugh after laugh. Rock Saul, the battle for third is a real barn burner as well there with Deadman and uh, the 90 of Brandon Newman. So they're mid apex up two, three. Pouliot oh, starting to stretch Three it wide out. into one. Sorry, Brian, yeah. a little further back. That's so awesome. That is off our monitor right now. And uh, so great battles all around here. The cameramen have a hard job right here. We can't get all in, eh? No kidding. So uh, we still have a few laps to go. I think we got a. Uh, just over two laps to go, Brian, and they're going to get the two to go next. Wow, we there see it is. Newman now making the pass on Deadman. Now, does Deadman have an answer? He's going to try and cut to the bottom, but oh, he gets oh, absolutely yeah. sandblasted. Yes, just soft with Roost. And you yeah. think uh, Deadman may be. F oh, our leader is down. I thought oh. he was just too good to be true oh, there. Yeah. Oh, Ryder's taking evasive action. Pouliot uh, down. I hope I, our flag is waving in three. I can't oh, see from here. Can just wanted to get to safety oh, real right. quick. Yeah, we're throwing a, a oh, red flag. Red flag. Yeah, we, we got it with that bike laying in the middle of the track. We yeah. cannot have a, uh, a 
rider plowing oh, into that. Man, I, I was just about to comment that I was just like amazed at the lean angle he was holding for quite a long time and then the wheels just went out from under. So he looks A-OK -okay the way he ran off the track. So What's, no harm, no foul. It's, adrenaline is an amazing drug at some, time, <laughs> some let, points let, too. Let's hope that the controls on that bike aren't too bent askew and uh, you know, if he's able to remount. Well, we're gonna see, we, we were just getting, we were just coming up to the white flag, I believe. So there's a real good chance we'll call this one complete. Okay, but yeah. We, we were just talking about how this would build his confidence for later on tonight. And well, that's gone out the window, hasn't it? Well, I think if he, as a racer, he's just gonna have to focus on the lead he had and that he what he can do. That was just a, a small miscue there. Uh, and the speeds he was carrying, uh, yeah, that was a mistake. And, but I think he's the type of rider that's going to take back to the pits the positives of that because he did have a real good lead. They did battle. He earned that gap. He earned those couple seconds he had. Or maybe it was a second change. But uh, so, so he is able to restart. So yeah. we are running some more laps here. This is a treat for us. So we'll try and get word on how many we're going to go. I don't know if we're going to go two more laps, Brian. You know what? If we go two more laps and Mr. Pouliot can continue the way he was riding, I wouldn't count him out of a top five for sure in the next two laps. We'll see how this plays out. Now we we will be going to a single file start here. We will uh, start them uh, nose to tail and a little bit scattered sideways between them. But uh, yeah, very unfortunate for Mr. Pouliot. He was on a flyer there. 61 and Trent Pickle, they're all getting back into their running order and uh you uh you keep talking that. brian i'm gonna see if i can find out how many laps we're actually going the number nine of jimmy the jet mccullough circling around love that old school yamaha livery there the yellow with the uh broken black stripe reminds me of the old kenny roberts days of flat track and road racing and uh deadman there i love his uh classic the number 13 with the skeleton leathers it's always a, always a crowd favorite. Jimmy the Jets circling around. Sorry, Brian, I was trying to monitor our radio at that point, and I believe I heard that we're going to do three more laps. That sounds good to me. So we're going to uh, see these bikes circling. I hear our uh, referee down there complaining, but as we know, the, these 450 machines do not like to sit still when they're running, do they? Well, no, and there, and I mean, if you if you have electric start, one thing, but we can see that uh, a lot of these bikes are more uh, a couple years old. So you can see the 22 Seguin kick starting it. Luckily, the Yami fired up. That sometimes when these things are hot, that's when. Yeah, they don't like to start when they're hot, do they? In, uh, if they're super, super hot, yeah. If it's just if they're warmed up, they they love to start. But if they're like to the point where they've been running maxed out, they can be a bit of a uh, a bit of an art to get them fired up. So uh, these uh, electric starts are, are a real bonus. No kidding. So, so what this does right now with this restart, I mean, Deadman all of a sudden has Bauer right back within his grasp. And this rookie expert, I, that, I, eh? I wouldn't count him out yet. And uh, Newman's been having a great ride. And Pickle was running good back there and forth. He was just out of touch of our leaders. And now he's right back in the mix. And, uh, and uh, boy, Deadman on the 13 has shown that he is not afraid. He is not intimidated. He doesn't care how much success Bauer's had down the US. He's here for himself. He wants to show that, uh, that he's, he's pretty darn noteworthy as well. And there they go. Check out the 39. 391 Bentley Thistleweight from back in about 10th uh, place. He timed that pretty sweet. No kidding. He uh, came up to about fifth there. That's uh, incredible. So we got Bauer out front. Nedman now has company. Newman pulls up alongside on that number 90 machine. So Newman and Deadman side by side. Oh, there is all kinds of action in three and four, Brian. Deadman is real wide. And I think he, he definitely lost them on Newman there. Jimmy the Jet, let's just see. Where's the 16? The 16 oh. is stuck behind Tay a little. We got problems on the 46 machine. I see uh, Sean Hoy waving his hand. That's very unfortunate. He'll be back here uh, later on in our open expert race. I believe he has a Yamaha built for that, actually. So that'll be cool. Hoy had been fairly quiet through this night. You know, we're used to seeing him mixing it up a bit so so yeah. now we're sorry we got a red flag what am i missing yeah. see anybody down other than the riders that have got the bike issue 
Yeah, boy. Maybe, uh, maybe it was the jump start by the 391. I'm not sure we'll have because he had certainly jumped that start to get that kind of drive, <laughs> right? What, well, like there's timing and then there's maybe he's early. I'm trying to get my bearings on the track here, Brian. Is he a little further west? Was he in a different area code when that one <laughs> when that one happened, or a different time zone? I mean, I think he's got a hall pass the area code he's in because <laughs> it sure as heck ain't this one. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. It's more fun for us. We get to see some more race action. Let's hopefully give him another three laps. Well, Hunter Bauer right now has got to be thinking, geez, what do I got to do here? Yeah, like, he, he please like let me get the checkered flag on this <laughs> yeah, one. This is great for everyone but him, I think. So Sean Hoy had his hand up like something was wrong. Maybe he figured out the jump start. Maybe that's what's going on here. Yeah, maybe. Because he, because he is back under power here. Sorry, still under yeah, power. Yeah, you know, I wonder if, uh, if Pouliot's got to go back where he was. Uh, and they're going to start back with that initial running order or if they're going to call it the running order they were when the red flag flew. I think they're going back in the exact same order as that previous they are. Yeah, so it looks like the exact same order uh, here for the initial restart. They're going to... So, so Sean Hoy, perhaps the only one picking up that there was a problem. And I, I you know, I was watching the leaders, I think, like you were. We weren't paying attention to the uh, corner flags. <laughs> Well, yeah. well Puglia right now is snuck ahead of this 08, and I'm waiting to see where Marin Tet slots himself here. So, yeah, the 391, that is uh, that is the rider that got <laughs> that great jump, and I just love Bentley, this 08. Yeah, I guess that when is, you go uh, from that about... That is a great handle right there. When you go from 10th to about 5th before the first place rider is across the start-finish line, yeah, maybe you jumped. Bentley, this 08, that is a proper jump. Yeah, I know, but put another strip on the Barbie. <laughs> Check out Deadman. He's got the measure on the restart of. Uh, oh yeah, Bauer gets pushed high. Oh, wow, sweet. This is uh, this is good racing right here. Now Hunter down the outside. He's got that fence right along the throttle hand there. But check out what's diving down the inside. That Mighty. that Newman. is unreal. Newman, he is all full of it and vinegar. Uh, Edmund ended up way, way up top, and that just cost him not one position, but two, Brian. Wow, so De uh, uh, Hunter Bauer, his eyes wide open. He has experienced the opportunity. He saw that all go down, and just morphed himself right into first. So a lap and a half to go for our leader. Newman now closing to within about five lengths of that back wheel of Bauer. Don't count Deadman out of this yet either. He is hard Check out into uh, turn three and four. Check out the 16, and uh, he did not get that same kind of momentum this restart as the last one. Jimmy the Jet there is tucked in, battling fourth. The battle for fourth, he's got three bikes. Pouliot now going underneath Little and Marantet on the exit of two. So Pouliot has not slowed down. He just had a bunch of real estate to make up. Yeah, but he's, I don't think he's gonna do better than sixth. Out at corner four for the final time. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the 24. Hunter, Showtime, Bauer. Great ride by Brandon Newman out of New York to grab second. And that rookie expert, Boyd Dedman, back there in third. And geez, Dedman fighting that bike, but just not getting off that throttle, right? So a little offering some congratulations there. A nice, nice little stand-up wheelie. Yeah, love it, love it. Now let's not forget the reason uh, restart. We had the number 16 of Dave Pouliot go down right in between 3-4, and he was pulling out a real good lead. Um, so that was, uh, I mean, a bit of a gift here for the rest of these guys. And that is, Oh, yeah, uh, he, he had that race well in hand, unfortunately, and then it, uh, it went south for him. But I got to admire Deadman for as much as he seems to be fighting that bike in corners at times. He's out there riding like he wrestles sharks for a living, Brian. <laughs> and he just doesn't let off that throttle. I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. But uh, this this is pretty, uh, pretty poetic here for Bauer to take the win. He was going to say maybe favored. Uh, that, Coming in. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad way to put it. Yeah. Now, uh, when we do this again in the open expert class, uh, of course, we saw him in the heat race earlier oh, yeah. uh, on that sail racing machine. He looks pretty at home in that one, but there, there's some heavy hitters in that one to uh, try and put a dent in his plans here tonight. He's got a little better at it wheelies the past yeah, couple of years, yeah, too. I love it. And uh, we're going to see if uh, Pouliot's got his framer tuned yeah. out so uh, he can restart. And if he does, unfortunately, he's going to be doing the uh, Dylan Vicks and starting from way at the back of the pack. Oh, man. That was, uh... Hunter Bauer looks like he's done this a time or two, doesn't he? 
<laughs> those are, uh, earned it. for lack of a better term, that's a sexy bike and sexy leathers, i got to say. He's, he's looking the part for sure. The bike looks super. There's his dad, Bob, down there, super carrying rare. the backpack. And that's how you can tell when they've been AFT racing. They carry a backpack and they've got tear-offs in there and whatever else they think they might need oh, yeah. for a quick little... Uh, oh, look at this. Now this is a victory lap. Yeah, just back. doing a picture. Yeah, back to the now I was going to say, geez, I hope he's going to do another, do another wheelie. Don't burn your leg, kid. So coming to the line, Brian, as we watch Hunter take a few photos, we've got uh, the number eight machine, Leah Kas Liam Kasky. That is a uh, sexy beast of a machine as well. And how about the number 30? That's Bulak's kid. Yeah, that is uh, Alexis or Alex Bulak. And uh, this is the first time he's rode this bike, so he's, uh, he's trying to figure that one out as well. Down at the bottom there, we've got the 70 of Seth Little. I didn't catch who pulled in uh, in the middle there. Is that steel, the 15T? Once again, this will be the last time we see our novice riders here tonight. I'll see Bulak got busted trying to pull up <laughs> the top. They've all done it. 93 should be Eric Oros. Back in, uh, he's still gonna squeeze into one yet. Last pick on the front row is the 31, that's Thompson. And man, he's had some hairy moments here tonight. Yeah, we got the 15 steel and then the 15-2. Laps. Sorry, Brian, I'm trying to sort through our paperwork here. And we're going green here, Todd. Oh, 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 Liam Kasky's going to have some work to do, Brian. So our favorite. He got that front wheel basically chopped right off, dropped back to second last. He's going to try and make his way to the front. Is that the 15T of steel up front? He's already slotted himself into four with a real good heads up move up the inside. And uh, check out the 11 of Taya Little, she is diving down the inside. I'm sorry, Seth Little. There you go, the 70, yes. I mean, and they're related. <laughs> they certainly are. <laughs> like so, to see those Suzuki's in there, so nice. Oh, Kasky and Little side by side. Right. Kasky trying to make that outside work. He's got to uh, set sail down that back straight, try and catch a draft off our leader. Wow, look at the power run. Right? Yeah, look at that slipstream there for Little right in the wheel track. Oh, somebody hard. Is that Thompson? He's way up there. Jeez, I thought the back end of the bike was going to pass the front end. So, Kasky's made his way into first place. Little looks like he's going to slot into second. No. Get shut down. So that opens the door for uh, Kasky to gap a bit. Yeah, he has uh, put some real estate between that second and third place battle instantly. Yeah, the 15T, the uh, steel. Nice little wheelie here for Kasky. So Thompson, after that big uh, scary moment, finds himself back there in fifth. He's got uh, Bolak in front of him. Little still trying to chase down steel. Currently about uh, eight bike lengths in arrears of that second position. I, I love the way Seth Little comes into turn three with a whole bit of momentum. And I think, Todd, he's going to make it stick this time around. Can he? No. Steel, yep. great defense, hangs on to second. And now we've got a fourth rider in on that party. That's uh, Bulak, I believe, on the 30. Yes, sir, it is. But Steele got a really good drive off the top of that corner. Unfortunately, they're, they're not in the lead battle. Kasky is checked out. Now, here's where Steele really seems to gain a bit of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, where Little seems, Seth Little gets a bit of an advantage here, diving in down low. We are at the halfway point, and there is Seth Little and Steele. Now, Steele peeks up the inside on the 15. Yeah, that is 15 T. That is the first rider I have seen that uh, has made that crossover move actually on the straightaway, setting up for turn one, well before turn one. Bulak now looking to take over that third position as they head into three, Brian. Well, Bulak has a, a great mentor in his father to learn the ropes of flat track racing and uh, on that little specialty frame or bike, he's really making it work. Can he get second place? Kasky fade a complete out front, barring disaster. Now we did see Dave Pouliot crash with a commanding lead, so let's hope that Kasky can hang on to her. I can't believe you said that. 
Kaskey continuing to put on a, uh, other than the start where he almost went down, just a textbook performance here. Gulak still all over the back tire of Little there as they head off into one and two. Connor Thompson currently second in points. And uh, oh, Gulak with a beautiful pass on the X-22. Yes. Just seems to be a gear high there. And look at Seth Little diving down though. Good defense for Little into the final turn. Two to go for Kasky. Oh, Little, the back end of that bike wagon like a tail of a dog. A little bit of a wheelie on the exit of four. Check out Little oh. on down low. We got uh, that bike that's involved in that second place battle, the 30 machine. Just saw a big puff of smoke when he got off the throttle there, Brian. We need that to hold together for about another lap and a half here. Yeah, I can see it. It, it is smoking a little bit on diesel. So Little on the inside. I wonder if that number 30 machine is going to be losing any power. It doesn't appear to be at this moment, but you can definitely see that puff of smoke. Yeah. As long as we don't have a valve spit out of that exhaust, we're good. And uh, yeah, yeah, now we're into some lap traffic here. So in the last lap, it's uh, checkers four. So out of turn four for the final time, Brian, taking the checkers once again. It's the number eight, Liam Kasky. Remember that name, ladies and gentlemen. In second place with a great ride, it's the number 30 of Alex or Alexis Bolak. And Seth Little with a great ride back there in third. Connor Thompson, uh, if body language means anything, he's not a happy boy right now because he was second in points coming into this and having Kasky, the points leader, put so many riders in between them, that does not help his chances for a title. No, not at all. And, and, and that's that's racing. Things can happen in a split second that can change the whole complexion of the points. So Kasky has to be really stoked on that beautiful number eight full custom race bike. So he took mom for the uh, victory ride earlier. Mom got the foot pegs. Now he's taking dad. I see dad has to let the feet hang. <laughs> that does so well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tough break, dad. <laughs> That would be uh, Alan Kasky, and uh, I, I know they're going to have some fans here tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, number eight, Liam Kasky, doubling up tonight here in the novice class. Oh, geez, Al almost went off the back of the bike with the uh, the wind drag on that flag. Passing the baton there, and he has got the checkers. That was a well-deserved win. And, uh, yeah, he, he's going to want to watch the start of this again and see how close he was to, I'm sure he knows how close he was to going down, but yeah, his front end got taken right out. Yeah, he uh, definitely had to uh, dab a little bit and uh, you know, Kurt's hang on gonna, to her. Kurt's going to make him buy touch-up paint now. <laughs> Maybe, but boy, that young kid, he, uh, he's he got a future, and let's just hope he, he can maintain this and, and uh, create a good package to get himself a good sponsor. And, uh, you know, I think it's most of their goal to Know, do well here and to have that opportunity down south. Well, he, he's another one of the riders I talked to during our autograph session down there, and I was doing just some interviews for the crowd down there. And uh, man, he, he's a little shy right now, but I think he's going to have to get used to a microphone being in his face the way things look right now. Oh, yeah, he, uh, he will. I have every confidence in him. Um, and this series here is just, just amazing for the Canadian talent to grow. And uh, this series is is on the ups again. It, it has making so many strides. Uh, and then the uh, COVID thing kind of really pushed uh, pushed back some of that momentum and now working on getting it all back because this is a viable race series and a whole oh, lot. Nice little wheelie by Little there. I thought he was going over backwards, but I, I know he was totally in control. I just didn't think so from here. That, it, that is twice as high as any wheelie I've ever done and stayed on the bike. <laughs> So 85cc final coming to the line. Brian, of course, we have Jamison Andrews, normally number 46. He'll be on that number 70 borrowed machine from the Little family. And how cool is that? We mentioned that. Uh, down on the outside of the track here, we've got the 754 of Ace Simiana. A little outgunned in this one, but mm -hmm. there's nobody who's going to twist the throttle harder than that kid in this race. Yeah, it's uh, that's pretty cool the way the kids' classes are structured here. They get. Six lap final op opportunities. Yep. We've got the uh, 23 of Racine and the 12X of Nadeau 
And we oh, Ace coming to see the crowd. Wow, that was a that was a crazy start for poor Ace. That was odd for him. He just not quite pointed the right way, and she got just a little. Uh, well, it's got a little sidey ways. Do you think those grooves we talked about at the start and finish line had anything to do with that? <laughs> yeah, just maybe, a little bit. Maybe he wasn't in a groove, but he certainly found one. I think his front and rear wheel were in different grooves. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. not exactly the ideal uh, starting position. It sucks when half of your bike is making a lane change and you're not ready for it. So our leader is out of four for the first time. That is probably the 12X, and indeed it is. That is Nadeau. And uh, of course, those riders on uh, virtually identical bikes, the top two, and uh, almost identical leathers. We're going to guess they probably uh, made the trip from Quebec here together. Yeah, Racine and Nadu, Matteo Racine and Loic Nadu out front on the 12X, the 23 right in there. Just gapping everyone there. Check out, check him out, man, when they uh, got the camera on him, the 12. The dough looks really good. He's got a pretty good slide going in the corners, doesn't he? You can see uh, you can see how those ruts affect these you know these bikes with the uh, these are probably 17 inch wheels I'm guessing on these Brian not the uh, 19 inch we'll have on the bigger yeah, 17 uh, 17 sure and uh, of course that makes a difference the smaller the wheel the smaller the bike the more it gets affected by those ruts in the corners yes definitely he's got he is maintaining some pretty pretty nice slide action and he's maintaining that gap pretty consistently though the 23 struggling to make up ground so see if Racine Racine going way wide into turn two Jamison Anders having a good ride back there in third on that borrowed machine can you believe earlier on today him and his dad were asking me for starting tips I come up here and talk I'm not down there and racing isn't there somebody better you could ask for starting tips I mean I was glad to pass on my limited knowledge but well I'm sure they asked you and they asked several others <laughs> and then they said <laughs> they then just kind of yeah. amalgamate that yeah you know that tumbling dog guy yeah forget everything he said <laughs> so Anders with a little bit of a wobble on the exit of four our top two that gap remains the same Brian about 12 bike lengths as they head down that back straightaway Two laps to go, the uh, two lap signal coming out for our buddy Ace here. We've mentioned it many times tonight. It's the coolest name we have here in racing tonight. Yeah, they're Ace Simeon. He just did, uh, you just saw him hit one of those ruts and both wheels came in the air over the start finish line. One lap to go for our leader on the 12X machine, Nadeau. They seen trying everything. Both of them were like tucked right down in the arrow position. Yeah, the Racine back there in second, that you mentioned that word earlier, the hinged effect. The bike almost seemed hinged in between uh, turns one and two there. He still hasn't given up. He's got about a quarter of a lap here. I don't think he's going to get it done, but he's still hard on the gas. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the 12 bucks machine of Luik Nadeau. Wow, did you see the head shake on Ace and Yen as he comes down there? Yeah, he's yeah. like uh, definitely in those ruts and a uh, little classic head shake on the, on the Suzuki. Yeah, he's a uh, much smaller bike, much smaller wheels, much more affected by those ruts we've talked about. Well, you know you know what you do when you get a head shake? You just give it more gas. When what, else, what else could you do? When in doubt, throttle it out. Yeah, man. So Ace was definitely doing it. So I love it. Kid's got some stones. But it is all in the dough there, the uh, 12X. Well-deserved win for that youngster. Definitely super pumped for him. These two have been kind of battling all day. They certainly have. But only one winner. And there he is. Good on him. It's pretty exciting to be on a track like this for him. These bikes are playing fast, and uh, great to see Kawasaki getting the win. Well, we didn't have the, uh, unfortunately, we weren't into our live broadcast when we had our 50s out here earlier on, but of course, uh, our buddy Ace took the victory in the 50s, and then our three other riders on the Hondas, again, they couldn't have twisted those throttles any harder. I think one of our riders actually had a birthday during one of the laps, because it takes them a little bit of time to get around this big track. But uh, <laughs> again, I, I, I say this to the crowd all the time, this is the future of our sport, all these youngsters, and, you know, being involved in this for... Uh, probably going on almost 20 years for me in Canada. I have uh, watched so many of our youngsters move up into the expert ranks, and it's pretty damn cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like you say, you almost got that parental feel for for them, you know. You've watched them grow up, and you help them out, and you know the families, and uh, 
you know, there's a lot of pride there when you see them stick with the sport that long and get up to these victories and make their way into intermediate and pro. Uh, it's just great, great to see. And I uh, want to thank Flat Track Canada again and Todd. Uh, you know, Aaron's been, Aaron Hemsworth and his wife really working hard to bring this show to us. Yeah, they, uh, they certainly do uh, their share of the uh, behind the scenes, as you will not know. Yeah. Yeah, we have open vintage uh, coming to the track, Brian. 26, first gate pick, love to see it. That's Alex Olson out of the uh, Georgetown area. And uh, he won our heat race earlier on. Pulling up beside him, that's a 49 of Bill Herrick. Talked to his daughter, Abby, a little earlier on down in the crowd. 41, that is Chris Murray. There's uh, the number five machine of Perry, our, our favorite, well, maybe my second favorite bike here. Kind of got something for the Harley XR as well. Yeah, yeah. There's some good-looking bikes. So Alex Olson there, Hog Tunes. Uh, he's a great mechanic. So, and the BSA way on the inside, the 49. We've got Yves Boisvert. We know he's one of the uh, faster guys. I'm trying to uh, go into memory recall here. Did he go down earlier on in the heat race? Is that why uh, there seems to be some confusion as to where he's lining up? Because I know he is uh, one of the guys to watch in this race. Yeah, maybe. And of course, we're back to the uh, dilemma of the 61 of Hodovic lining up on that CRF 450 in the vintage class. I'm not sure how he pulled that one off, but... Hey, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Fair enough. <laughs> maybe just a little serial number swap. <laughs> this is an XR 400, not yeah. a CRF 450. There you go. The 19, of course, is Glenn Brown, uh, father of uh, two of our fast youngsters, Dustin Brown and Tyler Brown. Glenn is one of those guys, well, even more so Tyler, but Glenn will race uh, a flat track bike. If there were speedways here tonight and someone had a speedway bike for him to try, he'd be on that, given her. And uh, his son, Tyler, uh, takes it even one step further because he'll race the flat track bike, the speedway bike, and the ATV class. <laughs> and I can't imagine the transition between those three different machines. That's awesome right there. Brown lining up, uh, this is the second time we see him do, do this tonight, Brian. He's lining up way at the back. He's gonna try and make his way to the front. While we're going back to say hello, that's very cordial <laughs> he, of him. He, he just went back to the exact same spot she told him to move from, so I like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Not go right back right away, I love it. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, her, got, her, her back was turned. And how can you not love a motorcycle oh, oh, thing? Mr. Hodovic. Oh yeah, okay. He's uh, now back row with his hand on his head, or what? <laughs> he's got he's got to oh, pat his head and rub his tummy at the same time. The number 11's doing another loop to loop. I think that bike just doesn't like sitting still. No, he's gonna it's try. And it's, it's hard on the clutches if you keep it in gear. Like it, he's gonna try and sneak into the front. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Hodovic now technically what? he he should be behind Brown. He shouldn't be lining up with Brown, but who am I to say? Now the 11 with the chrome tank. What what do you figure that bike is? I don't know. Cool. It's pretty cool. I think it's a Rotax power plant. Uh, it certainly looks like it could be. Definitely air cool. But he's got the full points for having a chrome gas tank, and he goes right to first place oh, out of that. Yeah. <laughs> he went to first, had that back end step a little, but what was that when in doubt line, Brian? Wow. Give it more gas, and boy, did it work out. It's awesome. Wow. He went from the second row right to the front of the pack. So Olsen and Herrett now side by side. Perry was in the mix briefly on that Yamaha XS650. He finds himself all of a sudden back and forth. Herrett and Olsen with a good battle as they head off into one. Wow, and Eve Brousset way out front. It's awesome, man. Look at that battle for second with oh, yeah. Olsen. Herrett side by side. The old BSA. That thing's still got some jam. It certainly does. 26, uh, Al, Al uh, Olsen there, uh, mechanic for Steve Beatty for many years, they taught and uh, yeah, yeah, his, dad, his dad was. Oh, his, oh, his, oh, his yeah. dad, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, that is uh, Alex Olsen. Oh, Alex, right. Yes, his dad was uh, buddies with Steve Beatty for a few years. I, I saw a pretty cool poster in Olsen's shop, actually, of, uh, of the two, of Beatty and uh, Brian Olsen lined up somewhere. Yeah. I believe he's left two or a team for a, rec a team to be reckoned with for many seasons. So Boisvert now uh, stretching it out on Olsen, and Olsen in turn now with about uh, 20 bike lengths on Herod. And Herod just going by uh, body language, I think he has conceded that he is definitely out of that second place battle. Brown has now made his way up into fourth. Where's our buddy Hodovic trying to leave 
everybody in his dust off the start. He's diving into turn one. Bois Air coming along to get the halfway flags. There is a uh, there's a flat track movie actually, Brian. I'm not sure if you're aware called uh, I want to say Race with the Wind or Race the Wind with Craig, with Craig, Craig T. Nelson in it. Remember Coach? Remember that TV show? Yeah, I liked him. Yeah. Anyway, Brian Olson in, in one of the little screenshots, you can see Brian Olson in that movie. It seems Hollywood always makes a mess. Or something related, though. Is it a good movie? It's okay. I mean, much like car racing movies, they always find that extra gear that nobody else has. Oh, yeah. One thing always drives me crazy is they never do up their helmets. <laughs> they just put them on their head and then go to the starting gate. Like, hold on a second. So Bois Bear, as we uh, discuss movies, has now got, geez, he's got easily half that straightaway on Alex Olsen. Olsen, in turn, almost the same distance over Herod back there in third. Brown is in a lonely fourth. And uh, the only battle shaping up on the track could be when Mr. Hodovic gets company from our leader here shortly. Uh, Hodovic, I have said it many times, Brian, other than the jump start he just did, and maybe I jinxed him earlier, man, he usually nails those starts. Well, for East Lucera, the number 11, our leader, I, I think he could have been uh, easily had that same hole shot if he started from the third row. <laughs> because it didn't seem to mean a hill of beans. He went from that second row to first before turn two was over. Yep, I think we're coming up on uh, Ward Jeffries is pulling out that white, white flag. One lap to go for our leader. As we uh, watch this race, we've got Chris Murray trying to get involved in a fist fight with Glenn Brown for that. Uh, that would be for fourth place. So Murray all of a sudden trying to wow, climb. Man. Yeah. He's, uh, well, look at that thing shaking around a little bit. These guys mean business here late in the race. 41 in the number. Just the hammering on each other. Yeah. But here is the 11. Is the class of the field right now. Yves Bozvert. Bozvert takes the victory. Olsen, who grabbed the heat race win earlier on, he's going to have to settle for second in a good ride. Herod involved briefly in a Here's fight that for battle. Sorry, sorry, Todd. No, it's all good. Here's that battle, the 19 and the 41. We were watching. Yeah. Murray still has that bike as he comes onto that straightaway and dancing all over the place. He's got a mind of his own. Do you think the 11 Bozvert's going to come to you for any uh, starting tips between races? Um, I, I think you're taking a shot at me right now. It's <laughs> happening, Brian. But uh, no, I think he's got things well in hand. Yeah, man. With that whole shot, I don't think he needs to ask help from anyone. I'm going to send him down to see my little buddy, Jameson Andrews, I think. And if there's not a language barrier, maybe they can figure something out together. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. That would be good. Well, that was a, that was a pretty thrilling race, and uh, Bozvert <laughs> just nailed it. And uh, that bike obviously working real good to have the lead he had there at the end. No kidding. And uh, hopefully these riders will be uh, joining us in uh, the rest of the series. And man, my I, I feel for these riders coming from Quebec, especially with the gas prices. You know, yay yay today it went down to 168.9 a liter. Hey man, gas is cheap. <laughs> yeah. So 168, like what, but, what but, planet was this again? Yeah, it's still about 50% higher than it was last time they raced here. So, you know, uh, it's so funny when the gas prices were, you know, hovering around a dollar's normal, you never really, you know, impeded you from doing what you want to do. And now it's kind of a, a thing like, whoa, this all of a sudden's cost me a hundred bucks to go visit my friend instead of, uh, you know, 50 bucks. Well, apparently that's where I'm going wrong is because at my house, it still hasn't become a thing. Right. It's yeah. just me spending a whole bunch more money. It's like dad, credit card, please. <laughs> so, uh, as Boisvert completes his victory lap, I see our water truck and our tractor out there. I see up next, I haven't heard talk of it tonight, Brian, but up next on our schedule is a dash for cash. So Yeah, always a fun, fun race. And uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, Todd, those, well, this water truck, it's kind of misting, you know. It's its on a good setting right now, I think. Yeah, it's just, I mean, the, the biggest thing we've got to do now is just keep that dust down, right? And, and uh, the, with the sun down now, we're going to see that, uh, that moisture stay in the track a little longer. I think, Brian, while we have a chance, we're just going to take a bit of a break. Sounds good. So back at the track, Brian, uh, Flamborough Downs, round three, Flat Track Canada 2022 series, and uh, the racing's been pretty darn good so far. And we haven't even hit the heavy hitters yet. But uh, as I said, our schedule uh, says dash for cash. I haven't talked to Aaron to confirm that is happening. I was hoping to get him on the radio during our break. I was unable to. But uh, dash for cash, if we are doing it, 
generally be uh, our top six qualifiers, probably, in the Open Expert class, and they're going to go at it for four laps, and at the end, uh, the guy who wins is going to get the most money. And that will be my new best friend. <laughs> We mentioned, uh, <laughs> or I mentioned earlier, the uh, the Dash for Cash in Quebec was uh, sponsored by uh, Dave Pouliot's dad and his company. So it was pretty cool that he threw uh, 2000 bucks into the mix. And then, and, I mean, and then there was other monies as well, or was I, it just the two? I'm not sure if it was just the two, but I mean, I'm glad he did, because I was just ready to hand over 2000 bucks just before he did. Yeah. And I thought, okay, well, well maybe, maybe I'll get the next one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wallet's in my other jeans. <laughs> yes. Let me blow the cobwebs out of the... Uh, I see Terry Ventozo walking down there. I'm not sure if he can hear me. It's nice to see him at the track again. And, uh, oh, yeah, there's a whole racing gang that uh, used to come to uh, these races. Good to see you guys. So I Welcome hope back. Enjoying, yeah, I hope they're enjoying the show. That's uh, another group of uh, riders that uh, they were part of the growing up thing with kids on 50s 65s 85s well i think anyone that miss it is uh is really missing the boat because this has been a great night of racing and like you said we got so much good stuff more to come we haven't even hit the tip of the iceberg yet we've got some great pro racing intermediate racing or we call the experts uh same as pro here in canada so yeah, that, uh, that intermediate class, of course, we're going to want to keep our eyes on Dylan Bix once again, and she's uh, yeah. pretty pumped up about her new sponsor. And, uh, of course, in our expert class, we've got Tyler Seguin kind of throwing down the gauntlet at the start of the night. Now, I think it might have been a secret between me and him. Maybe I wasn't supposed to say that, but, <laughs> well. I got a bit of a soft spot for him because uh, he, he just gives a lot of heart. He's got a lot of heart, and he, he rides that well on track real good. And... Uh, Pretty pretty stoked to, to see the Seguin on the on the 22 do well. Yeah, no, and he's. Uh, I mentioned uh, in the interview I did with him, he is our youngest ever Canadian Open Expert uh, flat track champion. Yeah. Now it wasn't in this series. I know he still wants to stamp his name in the history books <laughs> in this series. And man, he's just been one of those guys that for years and years and years. Yeah. You can never count him out. He, he's another one of those guys that I, I watched him start on the small bikes. He's moved up and consistent and you know what's interesting now with a lot of the flat track with the with the dtx and the more motocross bikes a lot of these guys are training in moto now so oh. uh, see when one of them so he's racing moto honing their skills getting in better physical shape they can hang on to, uh these these 20 lap mains is uh, really not a big deal for the guys that are training on the moto bikes uh, seeing road racers doing a lot of motocross uh so it's a, it's a lot of kind of spill over and uh it's pretty great to see and and again, fast motocrossers can come over to flat track and they kind of have a bit of a leg up, uh, you know, initially um, to be half decent at it. And, uh, and of course, some of the flat track racers that have just grown up on flat track, you know, they just awesome. So, uh, yeah, it's super great to see that kind of crossover happening these days. We don't have it on screen right now, Brian, but I'm watching Ward Jeffries struggle with that little uh, flower cart as he's trying to mark out that line. And if any of our fans in earshot can watch him try and go across that uh, start finish line and how bumpy it is from those grooves we mentioned earlier that thing needs some like fox shocks yes. that thing needs that thing needs like uh, steve yeah, b suspension yeah we, uh, we tricks we, we need we need to send that to the shop yeah we've got him on camera now we'll we'll see if uh <laughs> if, if if it continues that trend continues as he gets to uh, row two here let, let, let's just say it's safe to say I can read lips, Brian, and he's not praying right now. Yeah. <laughs> so. Maybe, maybe yeah, let's 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 let's, let's just open the open the flap here so we can actually get some white stuff out. Well, our camera has left him as he's going to start going across row two here, but uh, yeah, you can see that thing bouncing all over the place <laughs> once again. I'm pretty stoked on track track prep. We've we've got the uh, the grader going around a bit more, and it looks like the way that water truck was set on mist, it just kind of got that just enough moisture into the ground so uh you know we started out a little slow with the watering uh, uh over watering i guess uh for lack of a better term she was a little over water but worked in nice now so uh i call that building anticipation right yes <laughs> it is now man <laughs> not perfect i'm using that one when i get home okay well let me know how that works out for you <laughs> And I see uh, we do have uh, a couple of riders exiting turn four here. Now our finish line. We have a couple of riders here. Uh, oh, Davidson in 
number 30, Trent, Trent Pickle. Great to see Trent Pickle on that 61B in the mix. Here comes the ninth sequin. Sequin. Pretty excited for this. Well, Pickle. Pickle is down on the inside. Yeah. But he's got that thing just slammed. Yeah. Course from Brandon Newman. Like the DTX, you can run your heights all over the place. That one looks like it's very, very slammed. Oh, nice. Bauer does not get a good jump, but can he make it up as he kind of double clutches it? Look at the body angle. Well, that's Wow, Bauer trying to make up some real. Uh, nice. Wow. Good for his game. Half a lap. But take some high. Seguin comes in a little hot. Bauer had to back out of it and go high, so he's not able to make it happen just yet. So an excellent defensive move, whether on purpose or not, by Seguin on the 22. And then a battle for third is, is pretty aggressive as well. So Bauer, he's, it's a short race, Brian. He's only got two more laps to find a way around Seguin. Right now, Bolak holding on to third, followed by Pickle. Ooh, are they ever drifting far between one, two? Now on the back stretch, the 24 of power. It's a two horse race here in the dash for cash. Winner take all. Bauer taking a peek down the inside. Todd coming into turn four. Roost is flying everywhere. This is the last lap. One lap to go. It is Tyler Seguin have what it wow. takes to hold him off. Now we're looking up the inside. He's going to look to push Seguin high on the oh. end of the two, Brian. Oh, did you see the head down on Bauer? He is trying. He had that thing tucked. Check it out, the 22 able to keep it by a half a wheel length, but it is the inside through turn three. Bauer is having a look. Can Seguin hold on? It looks like he's going to tied. Out of turn four for the Woo! final time. Look at Seguin with a little bit of the nice. center of the crowd. Wow, hold what a on. finish. So uh, yeah, Tyler Seguin, maybe, maybe Brian, maybe he does have his name written on that envelope tonight already. Wow. And what a, bit, a great race. Great camaraderie there and uh, great respect between competitors and Seguin is stoked. Bauer acknowledges a good race. Uh, and I mean, this isn't for points or nothing. This is just for cash bragging rights, but it's a really nice one to chat about around the campfire later tonight. Yeah, then, yeah, they, they, they'll be having s'mores and Mountain Dew, <laughs> I suppose, around the campfire and, you know, a little... Come on, beers and sausage. Okay, there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, great ride by Tyler Seguin. He is pumped up. You can see him doing that hand signal wow. on the way by. That, that, that was a that was great, uh, a great race. I mean, we love we love all these guys, but uh, this is something that's going to be real special for the Seguin camp tonight, and a well-deserved victory lap. Uh, boy, Hunter was right there, and, and Hunter Hunter did everything he could. But again, a very very short race, and uh, it looked like they were really pulling him out outside so there he is Tyler Seguin right there from the Welland area he is really good on those smaller clay tracks and showing some great resilience on the screening pea gravel surface we have here a bit of a banking into these turns so uh, yeah that's it that's for his crew as he goes by the pits this one's for you too a lot of people behind the scenes helping these riders. Is there, it is a real individual sport, Todd, but yeah, again, there's a whole crew in the back tuning and working and gearing and suspension. And, and like you say, uh, sometimes it's just a phone call to your suspension guy if he's busy or committed elsewhere or not at the track. And you kind of get some click, clicking ideas over the phone. Uh, if you describe what the bike is doing, your suspension guy can say, well, try this, try this, you know, screw this in, back that out turn this lever and to dial it in to try and get that traction. Should point out that that is a uh, Chris Evans machine that uh, Tyler's riding tonight. <laughs> Norm normally tuned by George Evans, who is probably, I saw Chris earlier, I didn't get a chance to grab him on the way by, but uh, I'm willing to bet that George is also here. Um, but yeah, well, uh, Tyler obviously uh, come to terms with that bike as well. That's a, that's a winning combo. 250 uh, novice coming to the line, Brian. Oh uh, yeah, another another uh, great race because they're the, the number 12 of uh, that do and uh, virtually uh, the same as our 85 race. Just uh, we do not have a Simiana in it on that smaller machine. Let's see if let's see if Racine can get the win this time and uh, swap things out a bit. But Nadeau is leading right now on the 12x. Let's see if Mateo. Racine on the 23 can uh, may maybe steer it up a bit as they come through turn four. He's taking a good peek.
drag racing down. They got the green flag, so it is game on. And they are virtually side by side. Need to turn one. Tara Kawasaki's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's nothing separating them right now, Todd. No, you could throw a toonie over those uh, riders, Brian. And for those in the U.S. watching right now, that would be our American $2 coin. Yeah. <laughs> Why doesn't everybody have those? It's our Canadian <laughs> coin that's worth Sorry, about 15 cents. Sorry, did I say cents. American? Yeah. So worth 15 cents U.S.? Yeah, about that. So, yeah, side by side, our uh, top oh. two. Way back, we're seen on that uh, way back on that back fender. Oh, man, I thought he was just going to go straight off there. Certainly Look how track. far out he is. He's in the cushion. I think uh, Racine's arms are about three inches longer than when this race started, judging <laughs> by the way he's sitting on that bike all of a sudden. Oh, man, he was making a real good play for that lead, but he just lost uh, lost a few precious tenths there. Let's see if he can get inside here and just, just wind that thing out just a touch more. It's definitely uh, the rider up front, Ryan, looks a little bigger physically. Uh, although sometimes that's a hindrance, it also gets that traction to the ground better at times. Yeah. yeah. You can see Racine scooting that uh, butt right over that rear fender, trying to get that back wheel in line and pushing that bike forward. As they head into three once again, Racine makes up some of that ground. Yeah, definitely. He's trying something different now. He's on the outside. Let's try that cut under. These bikes don't quite have that same horsepower of the big machine, so these guys are just ringing. Got these two strokes run right out. Ooh, oh, oh, and a bit of a tank slapper there. For, forgotten man right now is poor Jamison Andrews on that borrowed uh, machine from the Little family, but uh, he's having a solid run out there. He's just got nobody to play with at this point. He's gaining experience with every lap, so uh, you know he's he's doing just fine out here as the leaders are going to take their white flag, signifying the last lap. And Racine is, uh, you know, he might just have to wait for another day to beat Nadeau. Well, I'm going to guess uh, this isn't the uh, first or even second time these two have encountered <laughs> each other on the track. So they're, they're also going to share Mountain Dew and s'mores and talk about this later on, Brian. Yeah, they will, yeah. <laughs> Maybe some uh, potato chips. Yeah, there you go. So coming out of turn four for the final time, ladies and gentlemen, the victory is going to go to the 12X machine. <laughs> and his buddy's right there. They both yeah. they got the exact same 6D helmets on. Yeah, no, that's definitely teamwork. And here comes yeah. the, uh, yeah. normally the number 46 of Jamison Andrews. <laughs> and uh, while I ducked off uh, camera there for a sec, Ryan, I had a young lady come up and uh, she handed me a little note. She wanted me to give a little shout out to the Petite River Nova Scotia camping crew. They're camping right now in Nova Scotia. They're watching us on a projector. I apologize wow. for how ugly we are, but they're seeing some fantastic racing action. And uh, nice. big shout out to uh, Luke, Amanda, Jaden, and Jake. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Hope you're having a good time. Sweet. And uh, your friend couldn't wait to talk about you. So. Well, I, 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 that's just awesome being camping in Nova Scotia, breathing that f clean, beautiful air, and uh, nothing like uh, integrating a little motorcycle racing with your camping adventure so you just got to love that and the technology to provide that service and to have them come in and give us a shout out that is pretty cool no kidding and i don't know uh, i'm going to do one more shout out brian i don't know if my uh, we have a victory lap here going on for the uh, 12x machine and not his first i actually thought he was just coming for your autograph but well, so did I, and man, did I look silly when I walked over there. Yeah, you had your Sharpie. I thought it was autograph, photo, you know, and then she just handed you a note. Here. Yeah, no, just once again, didn't work out. <laughs> Maybe next time. Well, get any phone numbers? Just mine. <laughs> Intermediate Open should be next on the schedule, Brian, so we're going to step it up a little bit from this uh, 250 novice class. Nice, nice. And uh, again, we'll we'll try and sort through our paperwork. We really need an admin assistant up here, don't we? Because <laughs> I'm failing miserably at this. Inter intermediate uh, open. That is a, a pretty nice class. Open meaning you can run the DTX or the full framer. And intermediate, that's our stepping stone to expert. Uh, so you're a lot of talent in there. A lot of, a lot of talent, up and coming talent. And uh, we're going to see some fast riders and... Uh, Dylan Beeks is going to make another appearance. Yeah, a lot of these riders are, are riders who have already won novice championships and moved up. 
Some of them have aspirations of going to the expert level, some of them may not. Um, but again, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice middle ground. It's a pretty cool division to have because the, the talent of yeah. D Dylan Bix, uh, you see her on our screen here, Brian. She's coming up. Look at how focused that young lady looks. Of course, uh, with new sponsorship by Roof Systems of Dallas. And uh, she's got her pick. She's going to go way up to the top. And we saw when she started in the back row in that other, uh, the DTX race, she went to the top anyway. So good on her for getting that. There's our buddy Adrian St. Amand pulling up on that 94. He's got second gate choice, and it's a 909 of Rod Scott. Uh-oh. We've got... Oh, uh, she's fired up. Yeah, no, she's, uh, she's way better at that than I am. <laughs> There's a 16. That's uh, my buddy uh, Mac Wooden Wheels Wilms. Then it's the 31 of Felix Dandran. I'll tell you that story later. Wooden, wooden Wheels Wilms? Yeah, Mac Wooden Wheels, Mac, Mac wooden wheels Wilms. <laughs> I'll take credit for that one. I made that that's one up awesome. the story behind it. That's awesome. Wilmsy. That's uh, Lo Logan Wilson, I believe, way down on the inside on the 290 machine. Back there in row two, uh, we got a rider, Sean Rupert. I thought he was doing shadow puppets there, but it looks like he's good to go. 38, that is Isherwood, 26, Wilson. And uh, there's a rider there that uh, I'm missing. We'll try and uh, catch it as we get underway here. Let's see if St. Amand on that lone Suzuki. Andoran once again gets a great start. Philip Fix, wow. I think, is going to find herself in second into one and two. That is two races in a row where Andoran has nailed that whole shot. I see a referee does have a green uh, flag in his hand. Rod Scott right back in the mix. Man, oh, man. I mean, Dylan Bix is a good starter as well. Oh, look at Scott with a nice. power move into three. That's sweet, man. He is on it. And he, he's been struggling tonight to get that finish. He's been fast all night. Yep. Well, let's just see if Roderick Scott can hang on to it. Dan Durant, pretty racy into turn one. Beeks looks like it's opened up for her to do the cut under. Yeah, she's and making that move, Brian, as you said it. Yeah, and she makes that stick as the dust is just circling up into the atmosphere as they come by the start finish line and uh, there is Dylan Bix with the pink on the front of her helmet. You can really see her from a distance. Roderick Scott in the tuck. Beaks way wide here. Opens the door for Dandoran a little bit. St. Amon cruising with a big drift in fourth. But Bix is able to hold on Todd down the back straight. Yeah, I think she's looking for the drive off the top of the corner, Brian. She's looking to uh, get up top and then dive down to the bottom and look for that drive. Now, Scott, as you mentioned, has had the speed all night long. Where he struggled a bit is in the handling. So as this race goes on, is he able to maintain this gap or is uh, Bix just a little smoother out here, either able to gather up that real estate? Scott looks so good right now. He just buttered that whole transition one, two. So Bix didn't gain much there and we're still isolated on the 909 on our monitor check him out look how good he looks he's he's fighting it but he's holding a pretty nice slide Dylan Beeks very composed you're right Todd her setup might be just a little bit more on point Roderick fighting the bike ever so slightly but maintaining that speed to keep him in first place down that back straightaway again love the tuck in the arrow position feels good to lead a race well, that gap remains the same right now. Brian Dix unable to gather up any of that uh, room in between them. The man on the move right now may be back in fifth out of our camera shot. That's uh, Phil Little. He's trying to close in on that uh, battle kind of between St. Amon and Dandoran. So Little trying to move up on that 77 machine. Dix uh, trying all kinds of stuff in one and two. Still, uh, geez, she's got, what, eight bike lengths to make up there, Brian? She really went deep into one and went way out in the soft stuff. So she's getting a little flustered, I think, trying everything, trying really hard. You got the blue flags out, uh, signifying you're being lapped. So here, Beeks goes really wide again into one. So she's liking that. And let's just see, oh, she gets a good drive, Todd, as we get back onto her on camera. She's getting a really good drive here into three. I think she's going to gain a lot of... Oh, yeah. She, oh, she's gaining a lot that she lost. Yeah, and she... Uh, the thing about Scott is if, if she passes him, he will not give up. I will tell you that right now. She, wow. He'll be uh, looking to answer. So, Bix, uh, okay. she, she's doing that uh, outside-in move, Brian. She's going up to the top in uh, turns one and three and looking to dive to the bottom on two and four. Trying to, uh, oh, that back end steps out. That cost her a little bit there. Yeah, definitely. And Roderick is staying a little bit more in the middle, in the meat of it, where it's 
Oh, I don't want to say necessarily smoother, but it's definitely less less material there, so the resistance is it's a little faster, I think, but I like the way she went way low. She's gonna have to try something new here in one, I think. Yeah, she's uh, she's running out of laps. She's probably got, in my guess, maybe five, four or five laps left. Oh, she drifts way high. And you can see she went across, even though Scott is 10 bike lengths ahead, that roost was still there as she came through it. She's going plenty fast. It's just, uh, where do you make it up? As Roderick Scott is riding very well. Or, uh, Dylan looks so good on the bike as well, but just not able to inch up to Roderick Scott. I think we're uh, just coming up. Uh, I think we got about two and a half left, or laps left, Brian. So this gap has remained pretty uh, consistent since Scott got the lead. If Vix has anything for him, it's got to happen real, real quick. She's She's got such a controlled slide. She's. She's doing everything she can. It's just now seems to be a horsepower game. She's she's right there, but man, who oh. goes to Roderick Scott? This is the closest she's been yet. She, she knows missed. it's the last lap, Todd. She, she comes into one three. and a half to go to Brian. One and a half. Okay, okay, even better. There she goes. Look at this move on the outside. She's gonna do the cut over and cut through the roost. Yeah, just all of a sudden, much like Quebec in the last couple laps, it's like she's shot out of a cannon. So one yeah. to go. She's about four bike lengths behind as they head off into one, Brian. Let's see if Roderick does a look back and she might catch him off guard here. This is where she made it all up last lap. So this is it. This is for all the marbles right now, Todd. I think she's going to have to try and do that crossover, which Roderick threw himself right in the way last time. Yeah, no, I don't think she's going to get it. She's certainly uh, trying hard. Scott Woo. tries a little bit of a wheelie. And uh, wow. Scott takes the victory. Third place is going to belong to the 31 machine of Dandoran, followed by Saint Amand. And uh, Little was in that mix a little bit. He uh, he dropped off a bit, but you know we talked about Dylan Bix almost that whole race. But Rod Scott, that was a textbook victory. He made that move on the first lap, and he did everything right to stay in front of that young lady. And, and you know, uh, to be fair to those two, they definitely gapped. Dandorand in third. Like they Dandorand yeah. was in the mix there for quite a while, but boy, that race between the two of them upped both their game and they just gapped third place quite handsomely. And uh, what a win for Roderick Scott. I mean, yeah, that was uh, well deserved. And Dylan, she was right there. Boy, did she ever make a great play for it with that second last lap? And I thought this was hers. And uh, Kudos to Roderick, he, he's got to be pretty pumped on that one. Yeah, no, he uh, he, he did a perfect job out front. And uh, you mentioned how good of a feeling it is to lead a race. Having said that, it's a little difficult at times, isn't it? You don't have that carrot dangling in front of you. It's, you can't pace yourself. It's all about steady, consistent, hit your marks, hit your lines, <laughs> and keep that, that lap going, right? I tell you, you have to learn to win because you're out front and you're hitting all these thoughts in your head, like, is this happening? How far back are they? Am I gonna have a mechanical? You start to, to start to uh, basically freeze up. You stop. You start stop breathing. You tighten up, and you can throw it all away. So it's a, a learned art to learn how to win a race. And then these young riders get into winning, and it becomes a little more uh, second nature there to be able to hang on and, and remain composed and to take the win. And Roderick Scott did just that. No kidding. Great race, Mr. Scott. And uh, as he brings back the checkered flag to our referee, it's time for our open ATV race. And uh, we mentioned it earlier, Brian, we've got Peter Grissom. There's a reason he has this number one uh, plate on his machine. This, <laughs> this thing should be in the Smithsonian Institute. Yes, uh, so that is, uh, I believe it started off as a banshee you mentioned earlier on. Yeah, that and big rad, uh, ra the rad's uh, placement up top, and now, yeah, an R1 motor. Yeah, it's shoehorned in there. Currently has a Yamaha R1 motor. Look at the piping, look at the pipe. Oh God, man. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no, that's that's a lot of diagrams to figure that out. That, that, and, uh, <laughs> that's a couple <laughs> napkin sketches. <laughs> La ladies and gentlemen, hide the women and children, because it's about to go loud here. And as I said, in Quebec, everybody was just pumping that fist on lap one. Lap two, they were scared. <laughs> yeah, this this is the spot where you may or may not want your boots. But uh, yeah, that number one machine is just, uh, it's music. So hopefully, uh, hopefully Doucette, his machine will hold together. This. Like 
Harrison uh, already putting some distance between him and the rest of the field. Judging by what I can see from here, I believe that's set back there in second. Sounds like we're at Mossport. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Look at this. I love this. Uh oh, we got Ryder on the infield. Oh, squirrely. Almost, almost gets into those light poles. Nice wow. save. Nice yeah. save. Who was that? The 14th, I believe. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to sort through our paper. At that. And 14 is Jay Wayne. And yes, a fantastic save by Jay Wayne. But geez, I think he ran out of talent about halfway through that quarter. Is that wrong of me to say? Like he might uh, just have to move, stop in for a little shorts change. Oh, a little bit stop did there. You, yeah, did you see the corner worker scrambling? His eyes are the size of saucers, yeah. So Wayne now trying to close that gap. I believe just in front of him is the 15 machine of David English. And, uh, Mr. Grissom wouldn't know anything about that because he's way in front of them. Doucette is back there in a lonely second. Brandon Doucette, another one of those missiles for an ATV. I think Grissom is just, just focused on keeping that thing on track because that is a, a rump full of horsepower he's sitting on. I can tell you that much. You think every time he uh, opens that thing up, the smile just spreads from ear to ear? I just would love to live in his neighborhood when he just like is <laughs> a tuning night. <laughs> just could scream it up and down the road just to, you know, tweaking it out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Grissom well in hand at this point, halfway through this race. Doucette having a uh, good run back there in second. Doucette actually is, no, he's keeping him a little honest here. Well, he's, he's running well. It's just unfortunate that uh, Mr. Grissom doesn't want to play with anybody else tonight, apparently. Yeah, he is just, uh, just, gets just a little notch up there, so. But uh, look, and when, you, when you focus on a rider in second, he is really hanging it out. His machine is no slouch. But Chris in there on the one, he's just, he's just got the, he's got the knack and uh, you just see that technique there, the elbows up. And Remember in practice, we saw our fans just in front of us here, which is just a little more than halfway down the straightaway, ducking as a Pete Rabble was shooting at him because Chris uh, was already shooting it at them. <laughs> yeah, he's shooting it halfway down the straight. Yeah, I think he's back out of it a little bit. Yeah, with two laps to go, he definitely... He, he thinks he's got this one. Yeah, yeah, I think he's uh, saving some of that uh, race fuel for another day. And as I mentioned uh, earlier on, Brian, in, in Quebec, his lap times were on par with our open top open experts, so that's pretty impressive. Because I think these guys on these four-wheelers, between me and you, I don't know if anybody else can hear this, they're nuts. <laughs> they are. In, a gr in the greatest way possible. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so one lap to go for our leader, Peter Grissom, as he uh, heads off at turn two for the final time. You said having a great run there in second. How, how do you think that thing handles in the trails? Jeez. <laughs> no one will ever know. Yeah. And I would like to put some street tires on that and just rip around town. Yeah, no kidding. So uh, Peter Grissom on that Yamaha R1 powered Banshee, just the way it came off the show before, really, I believe. <laughs> oh man, I'd love to put some lights on that and just have that as my uh, my second car in Mexico. <laughs> because yeah. you can uh, you can just ride that down, anything goes. Look at it, smoke's coming out of it, looks like Todd there at the front. Well, if this is a... Uh, seeping a little something. Yeah, something. you're right. I, I would say that's probably some coolant. And if oh, we go back, hopefully it's just overflow. A couple of weeks ago, he did not take his victory lap because uh, he barely <laughs> lipped that thing to the finish. They don't quite have the F1 telemetry telling him when to shut her down or pull in. Well, he, he limped it to the finish at about 200 miles an hour, I think is what happened, but. Well, he was certainly able to uh, do whatever, whatever it needed to be done to come back. <laughs> so uh, great ride by all of our other riders. Uh, Doucette back there in second. And then we had Jay Wayne and David English. And you know what? On any given night on equal machinery, I'm sure they would be in the mix. Yeah, yeah, true that. <laughs> Unfortunately, don't, in the open class, it's exactly how it's pointed out, don't open. You, don't you think with all the mods Grissom's done on that, he might have just a little spot to stick that checkered flag? Well, that's where he... Just put, like, a, not, not quite a drink holder, but just... Well, I was going to say, that's where he put the cup holder. That's, yeah, he used to put that flag in there, and he can... Uh, that's where he puts some Mountain Dew, Brian. Oh, yeah, he's looking for somewhere to shove it. <laughs> that's part of <laughs> So, uh... I said pardon? Our pro well, he's looking down, he's going, what the heck's going on? And yeah, he just might have to shut her down. Yeah, what's this hot stuff blowing on me right now? So that uh, 
brings us to the end of our open ATV race. I'm sure there is a bunch of guys down in front of us here that love the sound of that machine. And a bunch of women that think, what the heck was that? Well, that was pretty, pretty cool. Love that. Love these guys and the, the effort they put into modding these things out. And I love that Flat Track Canada gives them an opportunity to show off these machines. And it gives them a, an avenue to showcase all the hard work they've done and the ingenuity that goes behind these builds. Uh, that's that's half the awe right there. And then seeing it on track is uh, definitely the other half. So, Well, it's, it's a different well, animal having something like that, right? Like, you know, you, you, you come home from a race night with your 450 and you got a race in a week. So, you know, the next day you clean the air filter, you know, you maybe put on new tires, you maybe check the valve clearance, whatever. Something like that. I don't even know where you start. Like, yeah, really? Eh? You pull it all apart. You hope it goes back together, much like Ikea furniture, <laughs> and uh, you see what happens. But that R1 motor, I mean, that thing's pretty bomb-proof. Sure. I don't think it was meant to do this. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, yeah. And, Brian, we uh flying right along in our program. And for those of you watching at home, I hope you've been enjoying the uh, the show we're putting on here on Fans Choice, thanks to uh, Hills Productions. But... We are into our final track maintenance, and then it's the one for all the cash. We're into our open expert final. And uh, all these predictions made by Tyler, we're going to see if th that comes true. Pouliot, we got to see uh, where he is. Yeah, if he gets that DTX or that uh, full framer up and running. But Todd, we're getting a little water uh, blown on, and it's a perfect opportunity to go to a little commercial break. And uh, thank you all for joining. We'll be right back at you after these messages. Oh, welcome back to Flamborough Downs, just outside of Dundas, Ontario. Todd Valley and Brian Coster in the booth. Great night of racing. Want to welcome all our viewers at home and at the campsites and all of you that showed up here to take it in live. What a great event. And, you know, there's uh, big stuff next weekend at there at... Uh, Welland County. Well, that's right, the Welland County. And yeah. in five weeks from now, oh, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. In five weeks from now, we go up to Georgian Downs, just outside of Barrie, Ontario. Facility much like this, just a little longer and a little faster. And uh, that's going to be one you don't want to miss. And still, Todd, a lot more racing to go. Yeah, we're, we're just getting into, uh, as we head into September, we get into the meat of our schedule, really. All of a sudden, we have four races in five weekends. I'm not sure if you caught it, Brian. I was having some radio conversation with Aaron there. I think... Uh, as we get into rider introductions, I hope the truck is aware of this. We're going to throw it down to Aaron, and he can uh, do some introductions. We'll, uh, we'll play this one by ear and see how it goes. As we said, we're getting into our final race of the night. My buddy Jamie uh, in Tampa still watching the races. He just sent me another message and said uh, that he's loving the fans' choice thing. It's a great place to watch the races. So uh, thanks to Jamie and family for tuning in. You show me your message you got from Steve. BD, I'm not sure if it was a compliment or a non-compliment <laughs> on that thing you have on your upper lip. When I first looked up here tonight before I came up, I thought maybe I was working with Ron Jeremy tonight. But I, <laughs> I'm glad it's you. So uh, it's 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 the Mexican version of his field stash. Yeah. Okay. Or well, you could call it a '70s. Yeah. Jeremy stash. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's looking resplendent. I will, I will use that word for the oh, time tonight. Why? Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Dave down in the truck threw out a fabulous, and you you missed it unfortunately, <laughs> but I'll I'll give Dave props for that one. So, yeah, beautiful night here, and uh, as we said, we're just uh, rolling right along, and God, I should stop saying that, shouldn't I, because you, you know what happens. See, our corner worker is going for a bit of a walk, because, man, we, you know, we're, we're up here, you know, sh should I say working our butts off? Does that sound right? But we're, we're hard at it, but those corner guys, we can't do anything without them. So now's yeah. a pretty good time, I think, to give a shout out to uh, all of our lap scorers down on the line there, our referees, all of our corner workers doing a fantastic job and keeping us safe. And of course, the corner worker down in turn four that just had to dodge an ATV about five minutes ago, <laughs> because holy cow, was that uh, sketchy looking. I think, <laughs> I think they made complete eye contact, the uh, rider and a corner worker, because they uh, both like evasive, evasive uh, action. The corner worker ran like crazy and uh, the rider just did all he could not to hit that light standard. Jeez, eye contact. I think they're going steady now because <laughs> you don't get much closer than that without having to buy dinner. Yeah, really, man. So, uh, yeah, no, pretty decent crowd we have on the patio here. I can't tell uh, how many have been behind us up here in the stands. Unfortunately, they do not have any speakers back there, so they would have to sneak in real close to our back pocket to be able to hear us, I think, at this point. Yeah, but they, uh, they do have air conditioning. 
No, it's uh, right now it seems a little warm in here, but when we walk out, it's going to seem really warm. But the breeze is nice, and it, it is beautiful out, so uh, nothing, nothing wrong with being out there at all. I uh, actually like the heat, and it, a beautiful summer night here in southwestern Ontario. I, uh, I wish I would have uh, sent some kind of scout out to find out what is going on with Pouliot. We I'm could use some smoke signals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very interested to, yeah. uh, to, to see what is going to happen with that young man. The waiting is killing me. And, geez, he does not have any luck here. He, oh, he, he, he's had two bikes break. He, he threw away a lead in that DTX race, like a humongous lead. Yeah, that was something to recap on. Yeah, he, uh, he really did. Luckily, it was just a, a low slide. Nothing, uh, nothing too serious for a rider or motorcycle, and we did get a, a did we did get a report that his dad was uh, fired up over a little something, um, so not quite sure th what that was. But it'd be nice if we could get a report on his frame or motorcycle to see if that thing is going to make it up. But I guess the anticipation is something we're just going to have to wait out out, and uh, and I'm telling you, Todd, it has been an enjoyable night of racing and. You know, some of the backstories here, we talk about previous champions and a lot of them make a return. You know, we've got uh, Dominic uh, Buliak back, just showing his stuff on that number 30. His kid racing, so you're seeing the evolution there of the generations. Uh, it's, it's really cool. And then you see some pro riders get into other facets of, of the sport. Uh, behind the scenes and mechanics and tuning. And, and you know, uh, we've got our rider right here on our backdrop here. Uh, the 26 of Steve Beatty. Now he's got that successful suspension business, and he is actually doing the suspension for Hunter Bauer, I believe. He certainly is, and uh, I did a press release after Hunter's finish in Weedsport when he got the uh, the third place finish, made it onto the podium, and I mentioned how uh, there were some changes being discussed on Bauer's bike before the final. Yeah, the 2-6 uh, suspension. And, and we got to a certain part on the bike. When I say we, I mean them. I was, I was scuffing tires. Um, but anyway, Bob Bauer put out a call to Steve Beattie. I know he's watching and uh, he's listening, and uh, the suspension guru called it perfectly. He told Bauer basically what to do, how many clicks, this and that. Huge. And Hunter Bauer was on absolute rails that night. He started in the so fourth awesome. row. By lap six, I grabbed his mom's shoulders, and I said, he's hitting the podium. And sure enough, by the time it was over, and I think, honestly, Brian, was, if there was two more laps, he would have been uh, probably a pretty good contender for second wow, place. Wow, wow, wow. So, so BD, <laughs> BD diagnosing over the phone, yeah, that's, and that's, good on Bob that's to, so cool. to, to, you know, perfectly describe, obviously, what was happening, what the problem was, what we're looking for. Yeah. And BD did an amazing job of, uh, of diagnosing that, or he is just the luckiest so freaking suspension a, tuner in the world. Right? That's a team effort <laughs> right there, and, uh, you know, educated... Uh, don't want to say educated guess, but the educated call. And, uh, you know, you got to be there, live it, ride it, fix it to really have that full grasp of what's going on there. And suspension, you know, you could call it a black art. There's lots going on there. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, profess to being good and muck it right up. So, I'm watching. You, know, you definitely want to put your faith into, into suspension. And I think it's a very important place to invest money in your program. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, BD has obviously got got a little bit of experience in uh, in this world. We're going to watch uh, Ward Jeffries try and go across that start finish line once again. He's going to hate us for yeah, talking about him right now. This okay. is where he needs some suspension geared up for that. Thing. Absolutely, BD. Can you help with this? What, what's your deal with the uh, the needs. flower cart? Can you help us with this, Steve BD? It needs balloon tires, maybe that would help it out a bit. Yeah, it just got us. So, well, yeah, we're, we're on camera now, Ward. You're going to love this. Could I know you are. Could that throw out his back, knee, or hip? I wonder what's going to go first. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> to all, all of the above. And It sure uh, does spit out a nice white chalk line though i'll tell you not bad and we're gonna wait uh, i guess at some point to get some kind of signal from mr hesmer that he's ready to do his rider intros i hope our truck is aware of this happening and they can switch over to his cordless mic um because <laughs> this just kind of got thrown on us i think ward would like uh four-wheel drive on that thing yeah. come on so that thing should be self-powered so i see mr hesmer uh grabbing the mic and uh we'll see if he's uh he doesn't want me and you to steal all the thunder, I think, is what's happening That's here, That's all Brian. good. Nice shot of our uh, good-looking crowd here. You can kind of see the nice breeze coming in just to take that edge off as the sun goes down. It's actually cooled down just nice out here. Just a beautiful southwestern Ontario summer's night. You can see all our flags are just uh, right up, upright as well. 
getting a nice breeze through. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, get yourself a bite to eat. You can come inside the casino here and get a, an adult beverage. Get a t-shirt. Oh yeah, get a t-shirt there. Get Jordan Zoke to sign one of his posters. Um, and get a t-shirt. They're cool shirts and they are high quality. So uh, get yourself a keepsake from the evening. Get yourself a photo too with Jordan if you'd like. And uh, some of the other pro riders, we had our autograph signing here. I don't, uh, I don't have a problem with the quality of the shirts, but mine seem to shrink from year to year. I don't know what happens, <laughs> but. Uh. Yeah, uh, maybe the shirts, I think it's anti-shrink cotton, Todd. Is so, it? Oh, uh, well, they, they say they, they spent, or they spelled shrink a lot. You know, that wrong. taco salad you had looked pretty good, but you just don't want to have eight of them a day. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I didn't have time to eat the taco salad. I gave it to my brother-in-law. Oh, come on. Lucky dude. Yeah. No, Aaron asked me to do interviews down there, and I just kept on going. Well, you are dedicated, my friend. Oh, yeah. Well, I get home, the wife just wants me to shut up, and here we get paid to talk. How cool is that? <laughs> it's a vicious circle. It's a, I best of both worlds. Yeah. I know. I wear the pants. She just tells me what color. Yeah, there's, this has got to be a racer. Let's fill a little. You can tell by the high socks, eh? The racers get into the, the high, high socks. The high socks, and usually it's some sort of quasi-limp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or quasi-something or other. But, yeah, look at this. this and this is a pretty nice little lineup of, uh, of pro riders here, ladies and gentlemen. we got some talent there. And there's Hunter Bauer way on the inside on the 24. Uh, Showtime. Man, what, what a great handle. And this kid has all the ingredients uh, to go all the way to the top. And, uh, again, it's it's you know, just the right people, the right sponsors. So I think, Brian, we're going to throw it down to uh, Flat Track Canada President Aaron Hesmer, and he's going to do some rider introductions for us. Take it away, Aaron. Good ladies and gentlemen, how's tonight going for you? It's not loud enough. Can I hear some noise? Right on. Okay, riding the number 24 for... Jimmy Sale Racing on the 600 Road Tax. He's sponsored by NKR Canada. He's only 17 years old. He's the top qualifier for tonight out of Chippewa, Ontario. Give a big round of applause for Hunter Showtime Bauer. Your second place qualifier. He's third overall in the points for this season chasing down his championship in uh, the Flat Track Canada Series. A big round of applause at Welland, Ontario for Tyler Seguin. Your third place qualifier isn't up here, but he's all the way from Trois-Rivières, Quebec. He's riding the XR 750 Harley-Davidson tonight. Give a big round of applause for the number 30, Dominic Bullock. He's riding another Chris Evans machine on the number 19. Give a big round of applause for Brandon Seguin. From Leamington, Ontario, he's riding a Newman Motorsports motorcycle. Give a big round of applause for Trent Pickle. And this kid's been on fire tonight, all the way from Medina, New York. Give a big round of applause for Ryan Newman. And on the number nine machine, he's riding a 600 road tax as well. Give a big round of applause for Tommy McCullough. Sorry, Jimmy McCullough. I won't mess this next one up. He's riding the number 13 all the way from Woodstock, Ontario. Give a big round of applause for Boy Deadman. <laughs> Another Welland rider, cousins with the Seguin brothers. Give a big round of applause for Taya Little. And another rider from Leamington, Ontario on the Hudson Honda. Give a big round of applause for Cody Marantet. <laughs> another Welland rider on the number six, Dustin Lambert. And second place in the points, hunting down his first championship. Give a big round of applause for your last race winner, <clears throat> David Pouliot. 
Okay, start them up, boys. Pick a race winner. Who's your favorite? Is it going to be the 17-year-old Hunter Bauer, representing Canada all the time in the U.S.? Is it going to be the 16, Dave Puglia, all the way from the back? Is it going to be the XR 750, another rider from Quebec? Or is it going to be the local rider, Tyler Seguin? A lot of Seguin fans out there. Start them up, guys. So as uh, Aaron Hesmer finishes introductions, we see uh, Tyler Seguin and actually Bob Bauer out there talking about uh, starting positions. Hesmer has asked him to fire up the engines. We didn't see uh, Bol Bolak was pretty late coming to the show. He didn't want to be introduced. He's going to try and sneak up on these riders, <laughs> I guess, here, Brian. It is good news. We do see the 16 of Pouliot back there. So whatever uh, went oh, ill on that bike, there they are. Yeah, he's, uh, he's sorted that out, and hopefully it'll stick together. Him and his tuner, John Parker, and Parker yeah. is quite the uh, Hall well, of Fame. very seasoned rider and also a very you know, well-respected mechanic. So uh, Absolutely. if anyone's going to get that thing back running, it will be Johnny Parker. So, uh, Aaron's asked him to fire these things up twice now, and nobody's making that first move. It's just like the... Uh, it's like the the goalies in hockey, right? When they're leaving warm-ups, you get that guy that hangs out on the ice and doesn't want to <laughs> doesn't want to leave. He wants his team to win that warm-up thing. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure we haven't had anything fire up yet, but this should be a pretty good show. Pouliot has got a lot of work to do from where he's starting. I'll tell you that. And when you got guys like Bauer, Seguin, and Bulak out front, well, I guess let's not count out the other Seguin as well. I mean, his work is cut out for him if he wants to somehow make it up into that lead battle. Yeah, this is the anticipation uh, before the big show. Love it. I love, the, love this intro, and it uh, just gets the riders all a little bit of uh, airtime, and all the fans kind of get a face. So we'll see where Bauer goes. He got his first pick here, so that tells you he was the fastest heat race winner. Not right. just that he won his heat race, but it was the fastest one. He's going to go right in the middle of the track. Yeah, that's where him, him and his team Brian, I gotta throw something out to you. At work, I'm kind of known as a poem guy. I make up stupid little poems. So I got one I wanna try out on you here. <laughs> Roses are red, the track is brown. Grab up those engines and put the hammer down. Yeah, buddy. I can, I can, I can, I can flow with that. 10-4. So, uh, yeah, Dominic on that, uh, that Harley, man, it'd be cool to see that thing go to the front. It's gotta be, uh, the amount of extra weight on that machine compared to some of these machines has got to be just a little bit intimidating. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he, he's carrying some weight, but he's also got a lot of torque uh, coming through and getting that power to the to the ground. Now, if Quebec was in any indication, and I'm sure I'm sure it was, if this track dries out too much, that Harley probably will not work at all because he's going to need uh, some pretty good moisture in that track to get that back wheel to light up. And how does it look to you? There was a bit of dust swirling there. They did get a little mist out there, but it, it is looking drier than it was a little earlier, uh, Todd. So that might be working against the number 30 right there on the outside of row one. 20 laps, Brian. This is a biggie. We're ready to go. Look at Dominic Woo! all over that saddle trying to get that traction. And he's going to lead them into turn one. But down on the bottom, that's a 22 of C1, I believe. Loving that bike, and he gets a real clean drive off turn two. Down that back straightaway into three and four. We have a two horse race right up front. No, there's three, four of them. So Brandon Seguin, your early leader, Tyler Seguin on in tow. Here comes Bauer, and here comes Bolak. Bauer now oh. making a power move. He was back there in uh, third, fourth position. Slides up into second. Did you did you see Bauer there in second? He is completely sauced over on the first lap. Can't even read his front number plate. Nope. So uh, Seguin just uh, fully filled him in. Brandon Seguin with a fantastic start, leading this one early long. But here we go, Hunter Bauer making that move to the front on that sail racing wow. machine. Oh, fully drifting up. high. Bouillon all the way up already into uh, fifth place, Brian. But man, yeah, we see that dust kicking up. Our, our crowd down here in front of us isn't liking it. So yeah, we, 
perhaps that missed wasn't quite enough. Brandon Seguin, good on you, Brandon. Wow. And he just, let's see if he's going to have any mercy for his brother as sitting in third. Bouliot in fifth, getting real close to Bulak. Top three, not out of the, not out of the realm right here, Brian. Bouliot is taking, sorry, Todd, and sorry, Todd, Bouliot's taking third. Bouliot, uh, the man on the move. Fourth. Fourth is in, Brian, yep. He's still got a couple sequins and a bower in front of him. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Raise him a couple sequins and a bower. That's right. So tucked in is Hunter Showtime. Bauer on that beautiful framer. That is a sail machine. Yep. He is just sailing. He just set sail. And uh, as I said, hadn't turned a lap on that machine until earlier today. Had a problem in practice. Actually had to pull off. They gave him a couple laps to sort it out later on. Oh, a little bit swirly on the exit of four, but still doing good under power. Brandon Seguin, possibly the only clean bike out there right now. Okay, and now there is Tyler making a peak on his brother, sitting in third. He wants second so bad, but look at the 16 of Dave Pouliot down the back straight. He's really starting to reel him in. Bauer is not getting away as much as I'm sure he would like. It is only a second, less than a second lead. And now here comes Tyler. He is sick and tired of following his brother on the 19. The 22 takes a peak, drifts wide. Looks like it's opening it up a little for the 16 of Pouliot. He smells blood. I can see Pouliot maybe reeling these two in and, and making a run for Bauer. Yeah, no, I, I don't think you can count him out yet. Bauer uh, right now a pretty good distance in front of Pouliot. Pouliot, of course, charging through the back of the pack. It's a little harder as you get closer to the front. Yeah, that's for sure, and eating that roost. Now, here comes the Seguin 22. Looks like he may get the measure of his brother here shortly. There is no mercy from the 19. Tommy doesn't even know that's his brother there. He's just holding his lines. Here's the bike there, and there's the dive in the three for the 22. Let's see if these two force each other wide, maybe opening the door for the 16. Pouliot back there with the best view going on for that second position. You know he wants to be part of it. Seguin boys side by side into one. Bauer unaware of uh, the shenanigans going on behind him. Look at Brandon taking a peek on the bottom, Todd, on his brother. Wow, love the uh, the aggression and he's not lying down. He is not. And Pouliot on the outside into turn three. He's carrying some momentum, Todd, as they come into four. He's right up the middle there. There's... Pouliot looks good. Yeah, Pouliot is now in the middle of a Seguin sandwich, Brian. <laughs> as uh, you got Brandon sliding back to fourth. Tyler currently in second. The man on the move continues to be Dave Pouliot. Bauer right now with a healthy lead, but man, he may have company before this is over. Pouliot making numerous adjustments between corners there, but look at the favor down low here. He has just got the hammer down, and it looks like he has got the measure on second. Pouliot up into second. Does Tyler have an answer? Midway through that corner, Tyler drifts up a little bit. Pouliot, great job going around the outside. This is not over yet, Todd. No, we, we have just hit halfway, Brian. So Pouliot has 10 laps to gather in that to, what do you want to say, 20 bike lengths between him and Bauer. Yeah. I don't have any live timing in front of you. I can guarantee you the fastest guy on the track right now is the 16 of Dave Pouliot. Bauer, very composed, like he's, you take your eye off of that battle for second, third, and watch Showtime. He's really smooth through the apexes there, really, a controlled slide, but it is this man, the 16 of Dave Pouliot from Quebec City, just hauling the mail down the front straightaway. He's, he's got a bit of time here, Todd. If he can, if he can just keep that pressure on, he may be up into the wheelhouse of Bauer before this is all said and done. You know what? Bauer's going to be very surprised if all of a sudden he's got company, but it. Uh... Pouliot's down to about eight laps to get this figured out, maybe seven. Oh, Hunter looks good on him. Oh, yeah, but Pouliot closed oh. that gap even more. Oh, bro, this is good. Good racing. Good battle going on a little further back in the pack. Brian, all of our cameras will pick it up or not between Trent Pickle, Brandon Newman, and uh, Deadman dropping off just a little bit now. 
but geez, Pouliot is now within about eight bike lengths going into turn three. It's a real shame the battle for the lead so hot because there is, oh. as you say, some great battling all over this racetrack for multiple positions. Onto the front straight. Let's see if Pouliot find a way. He really gained some ground that last lap, Todd. He's reeled them in for sure. This is the closest he's been yet in this whole race. So, ladies and gentlemen, down the back straight, the 24 of Hunter Showtime Bauer under immense pressure from the 16 of Dave Pouliot, who won the last big round in Quebec. Look at this. Pouliot's bringing that right into the body. He's got a great line, Todd. Oh, and he's in Pouliot, first. Pouliot, our new leader. Now, does Bauer have anything in reserve here? Was he holding Ooh. back at all? Because, wow, Pouliot again from the very back of the pack. We thought a top five was a good shot. Look at the gap instantly. Well, remember, 10 bike bike ride. We saw Pouliot crash with a handsome lead earlier in the night. So now, can he, you know, exercise those demons and hang on to it? Now, Bauer's got nothing to lose, Todd. He's going to be hanging it out mad to try and reel him in. Let's just see what Hunter Bauer has up his sleeve, if anything. So we got to be down to my count is probably four or five laps to go, possibly. And uh, Pouliot now with about 10, 12 bike lengths on Bauer. And uh, I think Bauer might have been a little surprised when Pouliot came around him. And man, Pouliot's got that bike working. Pouliot, feet on the pegs there, cranked over. Both these riders just have amazing style. Uh, yeah, yeah, good eye, Todd. We've got uh, about two and a half laps left. The Bauer now uh, closes just a couple of bike lengths, but he's going to have to do a lot more than that over the uh, next mile or so if he wants a chance at these checkered flags. Wow. Hunter is working it. Boy, oh boy, is he working it. Yeah, he is not giving up. Both of these athletes are giving it 120%. Spectacular racing out here, Flamborough Downs. Lap traffic's gonna play a part here, Brian. Hopefully uh, hopefully our leader can get through there clean. Let's see if, uh, I don't see any blue flags out there just yet, Todd. Signifying right or okay, he sees what these guys, oh my. He really has them into a package here. And one lap to go for Dave Rouillon. I did see the blue flag, Todd, but I don't think those riders really got a chance to acknowledge it. No, I don't think so either. Pouliot now going to catch two of them in turn three. Uh -oh. Hopefully this does not get sketchy. <laughs> this, is, this is making me nervous here, passing. One set of quarters to go. Ladies and gentlemen from oh, Quebec yeah. City and from the back row, Woo. give it up for the 16 of Dave Pouliot. Yeah, wow, what a race, what a race. And that was a well-deserved win, Todd. I tell you, uh, Bauer with a favorite again, and Pouliot